right. Ladies and gentlemen, can we all please take a seat? We are going to begin the press conference coming up in a few short moments. If you can all please take your seats as we will begin the press conference in a few short moments. Thank you and welcome to the MGM Grand. Saturday night, rising star Sebastian the Towering Inferno Fundora steps up to take down undefeated champion Tim Zhu. But the wonder from down under has other ideas. Bring it on. Plus, world champ Rolly Romero never minces words. Pitbull, all bark, no bite. But Mexican powerhouse Pitbull Cruz is ready to silence the trash talker. Shh. It's a night full of world title fights, live on PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Las Vegas, Nevada. We are here at the MGM Grand as we are getting closer to Saturday night. It is PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time from T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. If you are looking to make your way here to the fighting capital of the world, tickets are available AXS.com, or you can watch PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. What a night of action that we have as PBC kicks off their 2024 campaign with the bang. Four world championship fights on our pay-per-view card. Our main event features unbeaten rising star from Australia, Tim Zhu, headlining here in Las Vegas for the first time, going head-to-head -head against the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora, also on the line, the vacant WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Yes, two world championships will be decided. Our co-main event, It'll be the WBA Super Lightweight Champion of the World, Rolando Roli Romero, defending his crown against a very determined challenger from Mexico, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Also on that evening, it'll be the WBA Middleweight Champion of the World from Cuba, Edislandi, the American Dream Alada, defending his title against a very passionate Michael Zarafa from Melbourne, Australia. And to begin our pay-per-view portion at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time, it'll be the WBC flyweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Martinez, defending his title against Angelino Cordova of Venezuela. But also, ladies and gentlemen, PBC on Prime Video action will precede the pay-per-view. It'll stream live and for free starting at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. It'll feature rising unbeaten middleweight Elijah Garcia, no stranger to Las Vegas. He will take on Kyron Davis, who is no small task. That'll be in our main event. Also, super welterweight contenders. Sergei Boachuk will go head-to-head -head against Brian Mendoza that for the interim WBC Super Welterweight Championship. The event promoted by TGB Promotions. The main event is promoted in association with No Limit Boxing and Samson Boxing. And as I mentioned, tickets are available at AXS.com or you can watch it in the comfort of your own home, PBC Pay-Per-View on Prime Video. Well, it gives me a great honor and pleasure to introduce a man who is promoted literally all over the world. And I believe that it's only a matter of time before he gets his rightful place into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. One of the smartest minds that we've ever seen regarding the history of the sweet science. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the esteemed Mr. Tom Brown. Thank you, Ray. That's why I always love Ray. Now, we've got a great matchup uh, Saturday night in our all-action main event between Zoo and Fedora. And we're thrilled to be bringing this fight once again to the T-Mobile Arena. You know, we got the terrible news on Thurman's injury. That was on a Sunday. We went to work immediately, and by late Monday afternoon, we had a press release out announcing this new fight. Many people even called it an upgrade. It went from a non-title fight to being a two-belt, 154-pound unification fight. So thankfully, both Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fedora have that old school fighter mentality. We reached out right away to Matt and George Rose with No Limit Boxing, told them about the injury and what we were thinking about with replacement, and pretty much immediately they got back to us with the let's go. Same thing on Fedora's side with Samson and Team Fedora. And there's much more on this card than just this great main event. We also have three other meaningful, high quality world championship fights. It's gonna be a great night, Got a lot of fighters to get to today, so we'll see y'all Saturday. Thank you.
All right, Mr. Tom Braun, greatly appreciate all that he does. And as you mentioned, let's get to the fighters that will be involved in a Saturday night's blockbuster night of action. I want to bring up a man who has a record of 22 wins, 3 losses, 16 wins coming by way of knockout from Albuquerque, New Mexico, not training in Las Vegas. I want to acknowledge his esteemed trainer, Ismael Salas, who is with him, ladies and gentlemen. Just an astute boxing mind, Ismail Salas, the trainer of uh, Brian Mendoza. This man recently challenged Tim Zhu in Australia, losing a decision, but he owns a knockout victory over Sebastian Fundora in one of 2023's biggest upsets. One thing about this man, he always comes in shape, he always comes in prepared, and he's always ready to go. He will make sure that the fight fans get their money's worth. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brian Mendoza. Hey guys, um, just want to start off thinking, you know, um, Al Heyman, PPC, Luis de Cuba, you know, the whole team that made this happen. Um, you know, it's funny, I was just thinking, uh, like six years ago, I came to Vegas, I was trying to see, you know, who I'd signed with and everything, and I think it was for the, maybe the Pacquiao Browner fight, and I actually came up here and took a fake picture, you know, manifesting one day that I'd be up here, and then here we are, man. Um, it's just, like I always say, you know, hard work and everything uh, gets you here, and we just knew, you know, I, di I didn't know, uh, they told me to kind of be ready, maybe as a backup for this fight, Send me, uh, might be sending me a, a somewhere in like April or something to get ready, I had no idea, but, um, you know, me and my team were just always grinding, always grinding, and staying ready for whatever, uh, the second I get that call, so when I got this call for this fight, there was no hesitation, I want to be on this uh, level of the fights, you know, I belong at the top level, I still think um, right now I'm the number two in the division behind Tim Zhu, and um, it's time to show that again Saturday night, so just tune in, be ready for an action-packed fight. Brian Mendoza, ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring in, uh, and first of all, acknowledge the trainer of Brian Mendoza's adversary, Manny Robles, ladies and gentlemen. Manny has done things at the absolute highest level, having helped to lead world champions also. Uh, Sergey Bogachuk is being promoted by Tom Loeffler's 360 Promotions. Tom Loeffler in the house here. Great to see Tom, as always. This man, 23 wins. All of his wins coming by way of knockout against a single sole defeat. 28 years of age, originally from Ukraine, now residing in Los Angeles. He has been on an absolute tear, looking to make it six straight victories on Saturday night. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Sergei Bohachuk. Hi guys, I'm happy to be here. It's a big show for me. And I show my fans, I'm sure everything is good fight. Coming on Saturday and I'm showing an interesting show. Thank you. Yes, a man of few words, that is Sergei Bochuk, but let me tell you, he does all his talking inside the ring. What a matchup that's going to be between Brian Mendoza and Sergei Bochuk. Well, also, now I want to get into the main event of our PBC on Prime Video card before the PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Want to acknowledge Stephen Breadman Edwards, who is the trainer of Chiron and Davis from Philadelphia. Let's give a round of applause to Stephen Breadman Edwards, who has been in the trenches in some big fights as well. This man, 18 wins, three losses, one draw, six wins coming by way of knockup. A native of Wilmington, Delaware, training in Philadelphia. As I mentioned, alongside Stephen Breadman Edwards, scored two wins in 2023, including most recently having earned a unanimous decision victory over Cruz Stewart back in December. The one thing about this man is that he's always in shape. He will take on anybody and everybody. He's prepared to go on the road. Anytime you call him, he's ready to step inside the ring and put his skills to the test against the world's best. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chiron. Shut it down, uh, Davis. Hey, what's going on? Um, we flew out here to make a, make a point. I'm going to win on Saturday. There's not really much to say. I train hard. This isn't one of those fights where they throw me in two weeks. It's not one of them fights where, you know, I, I came in and saved the show. Um, this is one of them fights where I get to show y'all who I am, and I'm excited for it. Y'all going to get a great fight because this is a good fighter right here. So, I mean, I appreciate y'all for showing up, and I'm going to show out. 
Thank you to uh, Kyron Davis. So you hear how confident he is, no doubt, and he deserves to be with what he's been able to do over the course of his career. Well, when people ask about who could potentially be the next young star in boxing, you have to look at what this young man has been able to do. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, first onto the scene last year with three impressive wins. No stranger to fighting on big cards. He followed up a knockout of the previously unbeaten Amil Calvidal with wins on the Davis versus Garcia and Canelo versus Charlo undercards. His record, 16 wins, no losses. 13 wins coming by way of knockout. His stock continues to rise, and he looks for the biggest win of his career on Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Elijah Garcia. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, you know, we're going to have a great fight, uh, a great night of fights. Uh, I got a lot on my plate right now. You know, uh, Davis, he's very experienced. Um, you know, he's, he's dangerous, and if I'm not prepared, you know, I, I think he will win. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be ready to, you know, perform at my highest level, and uh, we'll take it from there. I also want to acknowledge Jorge Garcia, the father and the trainer of Elijah Garcia. It's a family affair with the Garcia family. Great to see Jorge Garcia here as well. Boy, talk about some outstanding trainers here on the stage. I want to go, first of all, to Brian Mendoza. Brian, when you went ahead and fought, you know, you went to Australia, you fought Tim Zhu. Uh, you're a warrior. What did you learn in that that you feel you're going to be able to benefit from on Saturday against Sergei Boachuk? Um, I feel like the, they have in, you know, some similarities in style, but I feel like Tim is obviously a lot more polished, you know. Um, he's already at that level and stuff, and I just gained a lot of experience, man, and I'm out here chasing greatness each time out. And, you know, you see, uh, obviously, like, no fear of taking any of these fights. I took this fight. They called on two weeks' notice for it, but like I said, we stay ready, so I have no doubt that my conditioning is there, and um, you guys can expect another spectacular victory on Saturday night. People remember the win that you had over Sebastian Fundora. How much do you want to turn back the clock and sort of have another big moment like that here in Las Vegas? You guys see, you know, um, I'm actually underdog in this fight again. Uh, you guys see, you know, when I have a chip on my shoulder, what I get done. And um, I I'm, I'm very hungry for this fight, and I have a lot to prove on Saturday night. All right, Brian Mendoza, greatly appreciate him. Good luck to you, sir, on a Saturday. Sir, hey, Boa, Chuck, as you prepare for Brian Mendoza, you know how much of a tough competitor he is. He's a world-class opponent. Uh, you were supposed to be fighting Sebastian Fundora, but now change in opponent as Fundora will be fighting Tim Zhu. What went through your mind when they asked you, do you want to fight Brian Mendoza? So Brian is a good fighter. It's a good experience for me. It's a big fight for my career. And... Uh, I'm ready for good for this fight because I know what about this fight for me. It's a big fight for me when I win this fight and, and, and continue for bigger fight. Mendo, uh, uh, Zhu or uh, Fundora, it's, uh, it's now I need to win this fight. I contention has 100% for this fight. I have a good opponent. He is a good boxer. I know I'm ready for him. I'm ready. I'm show, you know, I'm not too much talking. I'm show Saturday. I'm sure such a good fight, great fight, and guys coming, and I am show everyone interesting boxing. Sir, so, hey, what has been the key to your recent run? You have been victorious in five straight fights. Uh, is it a confidence thing? Is it just you working on certain mechanics? What has been the key to your recent run of success? Uh, what, what have you... Can I help you? Yeah, by all means. Thank you. Uh, Sir, he gained a great deal of experience. I, I, I believe that you always learn more from your defeats than you do from your wins. So that was a great uh, experience for him when he came coming off that loss. After that loss, he came back to the gym and he came back a better fighter. Uh, he's been proving that time after time. I mean, he's on a roll with you know, all his wins are by knockout. Uh, and he's been maturing. He's just been getting better with every fighter. And I believe he's ready for the, for the test at hand come uh, Saturday Final question night. to uh, Sergei is, do you believe that you are now at your most dangerous because of what you learned and now in the midst of this win streak? Do you think that you are ready now for this event because of your loss? Uh, you know, uh, I'm ready for 100%. You know, I have, uh, mm, I have a loss. It's, I, I don't think it's not loss. It's, 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 it's experience for me. Yes, many right, many tell me out of fight. It, it's not loss for you. Experience for you is no more. 
and uh, I'm lost this fight because I'm lost hat in this fight. I'm I wanna win uh, KO. I wanna win KO. I needed KO. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, I needed. To. Now I'm smart. That now I'm um, more smart. That more, more have more experience. And now I'm ready for a big fight. All right, Sergey so, Boga, Chuck, ladies and gentlemen, good luck to you on Saturday. Speaking of experience, Kyron Davis, you have quite a bit of experience as you prepare to take on this young lion in Elijah Garcia. Uh, knowing that as people look at this fight, I, I would gather that you are likely the underdog. Do you pay attention to that? Do you use that as bulletin board material, or, or what are your thoughts on that? It don't matter to me. You know, uh, I got nobody can fight the fight but me and him. So. What you think really don't matter, you know what I'm saying? So I don't look at it. I don't, I don't really care much about it. But I think I am a underdog, though. They, somebody told me that, but it is what it is. I know you've taken short notice fights before, but to my knowledge, you got plenty of notice for this matchup. Do you believe on Saturday we are going to see the most complete version of Kyron Davis? Oh, my do. I think you're going to see a lot, a lot of things come together. You know, you could... When you got two weeks, and you know, there ain't no time, especially training for somebody like David Benavidez in two weeks, and to fight the way I fought, you know what I'm saying? Like, two weeks, I mean like a real two weeks. I mean like two weeks, like, come out the club, go, go train for two weeks, and then go fight, you feel so what I'm So now it wasn't like yeah. you were even it in camp. It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? So that's just kind of fighter I am though. I, I get in there and fight with anybody, you know what I mean? I'm just like that, you know? But, you know, I had time for this training camp. There's it's no excuses ever, but. I had time, so he's going to feel it. Is this the moment where if you're able to get your hand raised on Saturday where you literally catapult yourself into the top rankings of the division? Um, I think so. I think, I think a, win, a win on Saturday puts me in position for a world title shot. So that's what we're looking for. Kyron Davis, ladies and gentlemen, now we'll go to Elijah Garcia. Elijah, you know, you had a very big 2023. You fought on some big cards, as we mentioned but now it's no longer that you are just here. People expect certain performances from you. How do you handle that pressure, or is it pressure to you? No, nah, it, it's not really pressure, to be honest. You know, 2023 was a great year, but, you know, now we're in 2024, so I don't want to look back too much. But, uh, you know, it was it was real good experience. Um, you know, it it's going to help me out a lot this fight and uh you know to knock people out or whatever that that don't really put no pressure on me um it's more about just you know performing right and uh listening to my corner that's what gets me the wins and uh you know sometimes knockouts well let's talk about your opponent Kyron Davis uh, you know, what kind of statement are you looking to make against a guy who has put himself in there against world champions? You know, he's very durable, he's smart, uh, comes from a very good, you know, background, training under the guidance of Stephen Bradman Edwards. But, you know, how big of a fight and how much of a statement do you want to make on Saturday? It's a real big fight for me, you know. Um, to be honest, you know, Davis, he's, he's a real, he's, he's a dog, man. You know, I've seen him fight Benavidez. He didn't quit. Um, he's, he's for real, he's legit. And, um, you know, this is a real dangerous fight for me because, you know, he has three losses, he's 29 years old, and he ain't got nothing to lose. So if I didn't, you know, give 100% in training or 100% or whatever, you know, he, he could win. And, uh, you know, this is just going to be another good fight, uh, another round of experience for me. And, uh, you know, hopefully right afterwards we'll be able to get that title shot. And um, that's, that's what I'm looking for. So your next fight, if you are victorious on Saturday, you want a title shot or possibly an eliminator matchup? Yes, sir. Kyron, when he talks about this being a potential dogfight, I know that it's not going to be difficult for you to find this guy. You know, some guys like to move around and, and they try to be a bit trickier. But Elijah Garcia seems to be willing to engage with you. And, you know, how much are you excited about that prospect? I mean, if it get like that, it get like that. You know, I'm ready for whatever. So um, it's going to be a good fight. I mean, he bring it, I'm going to bring it. You know what I mean? But we'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to go around to the uh, four fighters and get their final comments. I will start with you, Brian Mendoza. Saturday night, as you take on Sergei Boachuk for the interim WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World, your prediction. I believe this fight ends before the, the distance. Um, I don't think this will go all 12 rounds, and I will be victorious. Brian Mendoza predicting a stoppage, ladies and gentlemen. Sergei Boachuk, for you, how is the fight going to end on Saturday against Brian Mendoza? You know, um, 
he is a good opponent, and I know this, and I am ready for 12 rounds, I am ready for 20 rounds, you know, it's for me, I am ready for distance, maybe go, I, I, I tell every time, I don't know what's he ready, you know, maybe he's ready good, maybe 12 rounds, he's ready for this fight, no good, maybe go, I'm, I, I'm, I'm try, I'm, uh, I'm show Saturday in this. Sergey Boachuk, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Sergey Boachuk. Very confident indeed. You want to finish off your point? He's good. All right. Well, now we will go to Kyron Davis. I know you have a lot of confidence, Kyron, as you prepare for this, your biggest assignment of your career against Elijah Garcia. How's it going to unfold? Oh, my hand raised. Real simple. Just at the end of the day, Kyron, shut it down, Davis. Women's in Delaware. Kyron Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Now I will end it with Elijah Garcia before we get to our pay-per-view main card. Elijah on Saturday against Kyron Davis. How do you see the fight transpiring? Uh, I, see, I see a real good fight, uh, but most definitely I see myself winning. Um, I want to thank all my family that came out here. Um, I want to thank my training, my management, and I want to thank my Savior Christ. Um, with, without him, nothing would be possible, and you know, I'm just prepared to put on a fight for the fans. All right, at this time, we're going to pose the fighters off, and then we will get ready for our pay-per-view main card. The fighters will stand up. They will have their customary face-off. And ladies and gentlemen, this will be live at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. PBC on Prime Video, preceding the pay-per-view, streaming live and for free, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time here in Las yes, Vegas. Thank you. All right, come on now. Give me some love. I didn't have a minute. We got to start doing this thing. We got to start this thing much sooner so that we can get going. I've been itching to talk. I don't even like talking. I like that. Um, what's up, everybody? Uh, you already been here, but welcome to the Porterway Podcast. We're live. Um, I got I got an echo. I know you hear it, right? Okay. Um, yeah, okay. I'll keep it going, and um, my... Uh, our, our, our esteemed producer, DDA, he'll figure it out, y'all. I know that audio is a little messed up right now, but we'll get it together. Showtime, Sean P. I am waiting on it with two T's to walk up in here now. No biggie. Um, we got a couple people around here that I really want to try to get on this podcast for a second. Um, Andre Ward's in the building. I just seen Jim Lampley over there. I didn't even know Jim was going to be in town. He ain't called me. Um, Jim's up in here. I want to see if I can get Jim for a second. Um, of course, the main event would be Ant with two T's. He probably watching in the in the parking deck. Like, look at this idiot. But, um, also, Kamel Moten. Uh, I'm not afraid to say it. The future of boxing. Uh, he has been on uh, quite a few undercards last year when he made his debut, and uh, he has no plans on slowing down. Uh, this this year, so spoke with uh, Leonard Adley just yesterday, and they put him the last card of the night, right after the main event. Why? Because there's gonna be people in the building, and they want people to see him. So, sounds good. All right, cool. Well, it's a little echo on my end. No biggie. I'll keep rocking with it. Um, oh, we also have uh, Steven Espinoza in the building as well. So, got people uh, walking around a little bit. See who we can get on the show. Um, but until then, I know we just saw uh, Karan Davis and Elijah, Elijah, uh, what's Elijah's last name? Um, shoot, I'm, I'm losing his last name. Garcia, excuse me, Elijah Garcia, they just squared off. And uh, I think that's going to be an interesting fight. Reason being is because sometimes, I'm, I'm, this is a big sometimes, but sometimes, experience just shows up in ways that you you weren't ready for um not saying elijah uh, elijah uh garcia isn't ready i'm just saying i think that there's definitely gonna be some hurdles that he's gonna have to jump over and we'll see how he uh he clears these hurdles um philly <laughs> when philly in the ring uh it is not an easy feat so um that fight's gonna be really fun to watch elijah is a go get it kind of fighter so that's gonna be a fun one to watch. And then um, the the sleeper on the show, I think, is Serhi Boachuk and um, Brian Mendoza. Uh, I think we know a little bit about Brian Mendoza. 
we know that obviously he just lost his last fight to Tim Zhu. Just really couldn't find his distance, couldn't get going against Tim Zhu. That's rare for, for uh, from Brian Mendoza. He's a thinker. Uh, he works off rhythm. And uh, Tim just didn't give him that uh, in their fight. You look at the fight he had with Sebastian Fundora. Yes, he was losing every single round until the knockout. But the way he uses his rhythm and his movement, he's one of those kind of fighters where, where he explodes. It just kind of happens. I think that was our first time seeing it like live in color. Um, so I think that's really, you, you, on, on one hand, you say you can't base him off, off of that that fight, that knockout against Sebastian Fundor, unless you're me and you've seen him in the past and you know how he gets down, not only in, on, on fight night, but also in the gym. He's, a, he's an explosive fighter that works off a of rhythm. So look at him to, to use his rhythm and be exclusive against, uh, explosive against Serhi, which you may not know about, about Serhi. Serhi's been off on like a three year layoff. Had a bad knockout. Um, I think he's had some comeback fights since that knockout, but um, had a bad knockout against um, Brandon Adams. And um, but he's a knockout artist for the second words. Twenty three wins, all of them by knockout. No secret there. But he works, works, where He's like a like almost like a train, but not a not a big heavy train, but just somebody who keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, and eventually he will catch you. So. I think that's going to be a, that's the sleeper of the night. going to be a really good fight. So, um, of course, still waiting on Ant to come up in here. Uh, let's see. Somebody's walking around. Let's see if I can grab him. War just went on with, uh, with Fox Australia. So, um, took my job, y'all. <laughs> I uh, I was holding out for the deal with, with Amazon and Fox. They went on ahead and, and hired uh, uh, uh Andre Ward to uh, do the telecast for Fox Australia. So pretty cool, happy to, to see him get that job and just happy to, to have him out here in Las Vegas. He wouldn't be here if he wasn't working. So uh, I, I know I'm gonna get a time, uh, moment of his time. So looking forward to that as well. Move it. All right, I'm going to see if I can get Jalen Blee over here for a hot second. We won't have him long because he's over here working with uh, PPV.com. Uh, he's working with PPV.com. Uh, listen, y'all, I've got to, got to, listen, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you, sir. Yep. Uh, okay. Okay. Best cookies in the world. Straight from Australia. I will be baking cookies uh, for the next... Um, I got four packs here, so I'm probably going to be baking cookies for the next two weeks. Great cookies right here. Look them up. They're in Australia. See if you can get some shipped to you. Um, I'm going to have see if I can get that guy to come plug his, uh, his connect over there, man. Best cookies I've ever had. And it comes straight from Australia. So is it talk to Greg? Is it talk to Greg? Okay. Get the text out to me. Yo, y'all got any questions? Shoot them out right now. Um, we got a minute. We don't have anybody on the show. Ain't nobody walking by for me to get them on. Uh, Jim Lampley is busy. I gotta, I gotta talk to his, to his management. See if I can get him over here. But uh, you guys got any questions? I'll let you go. These days, he lives in Russia. I live in Australia. Uh, we still talk, of course, all the time.
As soon as I started my professional career, I wanted to become my own name, Tim Zhu, rather than Kostya Sun. I'm in this sport and it's me doing the punching, it's me doing everything, it's me doing the training, it's no one else. We're gonna be here fighting. Pretty unreal, huh? I think we've reached to that point where, we, where people are saying, oh, you're, you're not Kostya's son, but he is Tim's dad. This should be made here. This should be made. As we are getting set for our pay-per-view press conference here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand, it is great to be with all of you, but we are now going to hear from all eight fighters involved in our PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Here is how Premier Boxing Champions kicks off 2024. With four world championship fights, every single fight on this pay-per-view is a world championship showdown and could very well be a main event anywhere in the world. We will start off with our pay-per-view opener. This one for the WBCS Flyweight Championship of the World. This man is the challenger. 18 wins, no losses, one draw. 12 wins coming by way of knockout. 28 years of age from Ciudad Bolivar, Venezuela, training out of Roselle Park, New Jersey. An experienced amateur who debuted back in 2017, having come off the biggest win of his career as he topped the former world champion, Angel Acosta. He looks to make himself into the history books and become a world champion from his home country of Venezuela. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Angelino Cordova. Buenas tardes a todos los presentes, al equipo de prensa. Pues primeramente dando las gracias a Dios por estar en este momento compartiendo dicho momento, pues muy alegre, muy contento eh, en, en celebrar eh, ya este día de rueda de prensa y pues esperando que todo se mantenga de bien y que pues sea un programa eh, lleno de bendición para todos, la verdad. Eh, muy contento, muy contento. Muchas gracias. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for being here. I want to thank the members of the media for being here at this press conference. And I'm really happy, I'm really excited to be a part of this event. I hope that everything turns out well and that everyone is full of uh, blessings and enjoys what's going to be a great event, a great fight between us and for the whole card, too. So thank you very much for having me here. Angelina Cordova, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we have Martin Botzer, our outstanding translator here as well. So that is the challenger for our pay-per-view opener. Now let's meet the champion. 20 wins, two losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He has trained under the guidance of renowned trainer, that being Eddie Reynoso, captured his title back in 2019 with a ninth round stoppage over Christopher Rosales. The one thing I hear about this man is that boy is he hitting his stride and he has looked sensational in training camp and really wants to put forth a major statement on Saturday as he defends his crown against Angelino Cordova. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBC flyweight champion of the world from Mexico, Julio Cesar Martinez. Buenos días a todos, muchas gracias por, por estar aquí, muy contento, muy emocionado de, de regresar al ring, pues hubo unos inconvenientes, pero bendito sea Dios, ya, ya estamos de regreso, contentos, emocionados, motivados, y pues ya sabe, como siempre, ¿verdad? Con todo menos con miedo. Thank you very much, guys, everybody, everybody for being here, and I'm so excited, so pumped, so motivated to be here, and like I always say, with everything but with fear, right? No fear. Yes, without fear. Thank you very much to Julio Cesar Martinez. Let's give it up for the champion, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now we will transition to our second pay-per-view fight, this one being 
for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. And the challenger in this one. Well, Australia is represented in more ways than one, not just with the esteemed Tim Zhu. This man has a record of 31 wins, four losses, 19 wins coming by way of Naka. He is the number one ranked mandatory WBA challenger at 160 pounds. Joining us from Melbourne, Australia, he is looking to extend his win streak to five, having won four straight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Zarafa. I want him to get back in there with, uh, as a man, I want him to get back in that bud. Get that go back. Thanks, guys. I just want to uh, thank everyone that's uh, shown their love and support. He, I, he thought he could win that. Yeah. But what about fighting at 154? Terrence is just that damn good. He can't beat him. Yeah, he, he definitely ducked him. All right, y'all, we back. Uh, we, uh, Ant is finally made. I know y'all hear him on the on the pile, on the on the, on the ones and twos. Yeah. We got my man all the way to the left. Ohio runs boxing. Introduce yourself sure, sure. again, yet again, sir. Ohio runs boxing. It's not me, but give a okay. shout out to him. He always definitely. A, a What's your page? I'm just the boxing guru. I was formerly known as the Wilder Hater, uh, but I'm the boxing yeah. guru. Oh, man. Boxing Guru One TV. If you're looking to find me. Yeah, uh, I brought you on, and, and we've had you on before, but uh, boxing guru. I'm gonna have to remember that. I always, always uh, had you in the same space with the Ohio runs boxing. Obviously, knowing you from Ohio, so I just kind of connected you that way. Nonetheless. Every time I see you, you got you got you got a lot of information up in there <laughs> training, big dog. And uh, we got into a conversation yesterday, and as we were talking, I was like, a lot of what he's saying makes sense, and a lot of what what I've we, every conversation we've had, a lot of it makes sense. And so I was like, you know what? Let me get this this young this man uh, opportunity on, on on my platform oh, to kind of share and show the knowledge that you have. Boxing Guru, I'm talking to you about the main event. Who you got? Sebastian Fundora. And I say, why? You, you, you tell me, I said, man, it's just too simple. But tell me why you have Sebastian Fundora beating Tim Zhu. Well, in my opinion, I like uh, Sebastian Fundora. I just believe uh, the last time he got caught up in, uh, you know, the lack of experience, the lack of training to understand when you reach that upper echelon of boxing, you got to be able to understand how to win, not just perform at that level. You got to learn basic strategies of winning. Sometimes fights is won on, on, on that implement alone. But in this fight, I definitely like uh, Sebastian Frandor if he remains tall. I told him yesterday at the workout, and I just told him just now. He heard me yelling, one-twos. This is a simple fight in my uh opinion because it's about real estate. Everybody know Tim Zhu comes forward. He like to put a lot of pressure on you. So with Sebastian being 6'5", he definitely cannot give up his height. He definitely cannot reach for his jab. A lot of uh, Sebastian for Dora uh, uh, flaws is he reached for his p opponents. Him and his dad or his trainer, whoever's working with him, doesn't work the mitts high enough or understand feints and different things. You don't never have to learn, um, use your jab all the time or land it all the time. Sometimes you faint and then drop a one too quick and then you pivot out. So that's going to be key fundamentals that uh, Seb Sebastian definitely has to use uh, tomorrow, uh, Saturday night if he want to be victorious. But if uh, Sebastian goes back to those Paul Williams type tendencies where he's falling in Leaning in face four, it'll just be a punching fest for Tim Zoo. Tim Zoo camp is uh, expecting that. They're going to put a lot of pressure on, on Sebastian, see if he can use his feet, and see if he can handle that pressure in the kitchen. So in my opinion, if Sebastian and his camp been working on that, it's going to be easy work for him. And I believe it could be meant for Sebastian to pull off the upset, even though the money is behind Tim Zhu because Australia is coming over here. They want him to win, but I'm rooting for the underdog, uh, Sebastian Fendora. And I got, I got Fendora too, because I think this uh, last minute issue, 
affects Tim Zoo more than it affects Fundora. You can't, it's hard to prepare, well, it's two weeks, but literally it's what, four days, be honest. Ooh. How do you prepare for Fundora in four days? Yes. Soft paw, 6'6". Yes. Six, six. Yes. Me, I, I believe the business sense, Sebastian really don't talk a lot. Yeah, yeah. We'll so, so maybe they had this plan anyway. You know, on this magnitude of a fight, uh -huh. because Keith Thurman was basically the hype man. You know, because when you put Keith Thurman name up there, people was like, is it going to be a real fight? Is he going to come in, take the payout? You know, people were suspect about that. But at least with Fandora, you know you're going to get an action-packed fight if you're a fight fan. But let's go back to what Ant just said. Yeah, you're right. It does take, it, does, it is hard preparing for someone who is a southpaw, who is 6'6", six, six, that big, you just, you can't replace that. However, Sebastian Fundora does have to work for you. You don't have to look for him. He's right in front of you. You don't have to reach for him. He's coming down to your, to your level. Um, he don't use the southpaw stance as there's no, there's no advantage. Like he doesn't work as a southpaw behind the jab, setting up that left hand that you're not used to seeing because the rhythm of of seeing left right left right now you got to get now you, you psychologically you got it now you're seeing right left right left he's not a right left kind of you know what i mean so i really don't think it's a puzzle i think the puzzle now becomes tim zoo i i think tim's gonna be very patient i think tim's gonna let uh Fondor get into that steam road that he likes to get into and i think he's gonna pick him apart I just believe this is a difference on uh, Sebastian Fandora. He's been waiting for this opportunity because when he was the number one ranked guy, when uh, Jamil Charlo was, was avoiding him or so-called avoiding him for bigger fights, I just believe Sebastian got complacent. But with him getting humbled, and this is his golden opportunity, it's now or never for the Fandora. That's not him as a, as a person or as an athlete. He's not a complacent kind of guy. Like he, his dad, his sister, they work very hard. Yes. They love this sport. When you, when you, when you have a hard work, when you have a good work ethic, on top of love, that's that. There's no complacency in that. You know what I mean? So I think the the knockout that everybody's gonna talk about until this fight actually happens, everybody's gonna talk about the knockout. That was a moment where he got caught up doing, making the mistake that he's made several times. Yes. And the, and Brian Mendoza finally pounced and capitalized on it. Not a, not a mistake that not very many people are able to capitalize on. Let's take a, again one of the one of the um, one of the the weak points that I personally have that I think about Tim Zhu. Tim is not explosive. Tim, when you talk about Tim as a fighter, everybody talks about his work rate, uh, and then you talk about him wearing you down. He's not explosive from a standpoint of a one or two punches that 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 did some damage. He is. 8, 12 rounds of yeah. damage, you know what I mean? So I think, again, that moment that we saw with Brian Mendoza, I don't think we see that same moment with Tim Zhu because Tim isn't that kind of fighter. He's not an explosive rhythm fighter, let me find my moment kind of fighter. So I think it's a 50-50 fight, but at the end of the day, I do think that Sebastian Fundor is going to do a lot of the work for Tim and put himself in, 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 in Tim's in Tim's sights. But see, that's what the complacency I was talking about. See, the complacency doesn't have to be about as far as um, um, the work ethic, him and his family and stuff, but the complacency of understanding boxing. Yeah. See, and that was his flaw, in my opinion, because, like you said, he going to do a lot of the work if he loses the fight for yeah. Tim Zhu. Yeah. See, if now, since that happened to him, now they had to go back to the um, drawing board to realize, okay, man, how did that happen? I was giving up my height. I was giving up my reach. We're going to go to the stage. We got Sebastian at the, at the, at the podium now. This is a big opportunity we're going to take advantage of and become world champion on Saturday night. <laughs> Sebastian Fundora, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Fundora was supposed to fight Sergei Bohochuk, but due to the injury to Keith Thurman, he now is in the main event against the man who I'm getting ready to introduce. Well, first of all, before I get ready to acknowledge him, I want to acknowledge I Igor Gulabev, the trainer of Tim Zhu, and also George Rose, the CEO of No Limit Boxing as well, a very instrumental in the success of Tim Zhu. 
This man, 24 wins, no losses, 17 victories coming by way of knockout. A native of Sydney, Australia, certainly a rising star. He is the son of the Hall of Famer, Kostya Zub. Tim comes off of a red hot 2023. What a run that he had beating the likes of Tony Harrison, Brian Mendoza, and Carlos Ocampo. He is a superstar in his home country of Australia. But the one thing that he's always said is that I want to come here to Las Vegas and headline a massive night of boxing as a world champion. Well, Tim, ask and you shall receive and you've earned every bit of it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the pride and joy of Australia. Here is the undefeated and the reigning and defending WBO super welterweight champion of the world. Here is Tim Azoo. Look, we're finally here. It's been a, it's been a long road, uh, but I've dreamt of this moment my whole life. You know, every every moment that I've done has led to this point, and and I'm glad to be doing it and representing everyone, and and doing it on this uh, specific specific day. You know, it's been a change of events, but you know what? The show goes on. We saved it. Uh, destiny awaits, and uh, I can't wait to put on a show. Uh, I should be having two belts now. I don't know why, why that belt's there. He, he hasn't earned it yet. Uh, it should be in the middle here. But Saturday night, we get to, we get to fight for, for both of them. For me, this, this period of time, it's about collecting belts, collecting legacy. And again, as I said previously before, the greatest boxing family ever lived. It's happening right now, right here. So tune in. Tim Zhu, ladies and gentlemen, as Tim mentioned, he's looking to further that family legacy. Well, what a start that he has had. And now I'm going to talk with the fighters. I'll start off with Angelino Cordova. Angelino, have you thought about the moment that if you're able to top your adversary on Saturday when they say, and the new WBC flyweight champion of the world, what that would mean for you and your home country of Venezuela? Cabeza en la almohada. ¿Te imaginas el momento en el que vas a poder eh, eh, decir y el nuevo y, y todo lo que va a significar para Venezuela, no? ¿Qué, qué, ¿Cómo te lo imaginas a eso? Oye, es bueno. Oye. Sí. Oye, la verdad, eh, sí me lo imagino, sí me imagino ese momento. Y pues no es desde ahora, desde hace um, mucho tiempo. Uh, yeah, I don't mean any disrespect, but I, I want to try to get as much in with us as we can. I know that uh, everyone here, they, while they want to be a part of this from a distance, they they also would like to hear more from us than uh, than from the stage. I don't mean to dis disrespect anybody on the stage. And to that point of everyone on the stage, what is what's the fight you're looking forward to the most? Well. Um, I'm still looking forward to my guy, Roly. I think Roly, but before I get on that, I want to conclude with uh, Sebastian. This kind of remind me of when... He's still on him? Yeah, just this, the conclusion when he came up. This kind of remind me when uh, uh, Zab Judah fought his dad, uh, Costa Zoo. Uh -huh. Zab Judah was in, went in the first couple rounds real easily. Yeah. He got lack of days. Yeah. So with uh, Sebastian, you got to be focused. Your mind state has to understand the keys of victory. Mm -hmm. If you understand that, it can take you a long way to become a world champion. And that's going to separate Saturday night with that. But the fight that I'm uh, truly looking forward to is my guy, Roley Ramirez, uh, against Pitbull Cruz. I believe this is a fight tailor made for Roley to come out to be a star. I believe Roley is definitely. This fight is going to propel him mm -hmm. because he has a world-known trainer, uh, Ishmael Salas. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. He's definitely a world-known trainer, and I definitely believe he's going to give him the keys to victory to utilize his gifts more uh, effective. Nothing against Bullet, but I think it's going to be very effective Saturday night against Pitbull. Yeah, I agree with you totally about that. Uh, nothing against Bullet, but Salas is a Hall of Fame trainer. Yes. Look what he did to Ugas on the second half of his career. Look what he did to Joe Joyce. Exactly. So, and I would love to see Roley uh, become a star and the guy he's supposed to be and then hopefully get past this and defend this title against T.O. Exactly. Uh, Devin Haney and is it Matias? Garcia. 
Garcia, Gar yeah, Ryan yeah. M. Yeah. Yeah, I want, yeah, Ryan. Yeah, so, I don't know if I'm looking forward to the Ryan. Oh, that'll be a good scratch. I want to see. I want to see a unification. Oh yeah, yeah. Either way. Out of all three of them, those are good entertaining fights. Yeah, the yeah. new crop are taking over boxing. So I believe Saturday night, don't be surprised if Roley, what he said as far as knock out his prediction. Because Pitbull, in my opinion, at 5'4", and one-dimensional is too small for the 140-pound division. So if Silas can't bring it through, this is going to be a major letdown. That fight yes. ends in the knockout. Yes. I think we're going to find out exactly where uh, Roley is now since the Tank Davis fight. I'm really not one that, I, I do believe that there's always gonna be some debris, whether you win, lose, knock out, the, the list goes on. There's always gonna be debris from the previous fight, previous fights. However, I think that everybody handles it differently. Uh, everybody has handles the wins and the losses differently. But I think that we're even gonna see where, where Roley is. We're gonna see where he is psychologically as well as physically. Because I, I truly do believe that Barroso, that last fight that he had, Barroso caught him a couple of times and had him shook, had him light on his feet. Um, I don't know. I don't know if, uh, dropped him, right? you know, yeah. yeah and the, the thing about Pitbull is he, he comes very, very strong, but you, you really don't know if that's, if that's real. You know what I mean? You can have a lot of muscle. We already know. Muscle don't, mean, don't add up to power. You know what I mean? And, and on, top, on top of that, his delivery. Everything is big and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see if that power translates to 140, you know, and then, of course, we'll see, you know, how, how handy, how uh, Roley handles the, 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 the pressure as well as, you know, if he, is the, if he does get touched, you know what I mean? So I think we're we about to find out exactly where Roley is, and this is his first title defense as well. So, you know, we can't ignore that, you know? Um, this is a good coming out party for all the naysayers who doubt and rolling for getting to this point. Right now, he's going to shut the critics up, in my opinion, because he got a replicable name and Pitbull Cruz in front of him. Yeah. And plus, stylistic-wise, you got to go with a puncher. Yeah. You got to go with a puncher yeah. in boxing like that. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I've been pushing against you. Uh, I'm going with Pitbull. Okay, okay. I'm going with Roley. We, I'm not, I could be wrong, but... I could be all the way wrong, too. But, but I'm going to look at the trainer. It's 50-50. I'm going to look at the trainer. Now, as a, a fighter loses because of the preparation, the mind state, and the training. And so the trainer got to take a, a accountability for that. Absolutely. And me, based on the art of boxing and understanding the study of it, Roley should win this fight in dominant fashion. Yeah. Because he's a puncher and he's gonna have plenty of chances sure. to KO Cruz. Plenty of chances, but he gotta pull the gun. He gotta yes, pull the trigger. He, he gotta pull the trigger. He had, a, he had a hard time pulling the trigger in his last fight. Yeah, yeah. We'll but, but, but the old man was, he's a different foe. The old man, <laughs> even a guy from England or whatever. 100 saw that. though. <laughs> 100. He found out the hard way. Yeah, yeah, he he yeah, thought, yeah, oh, yeah, he ain't yeah, gonna yeah. do me like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it can happen. So, But I just believe this style matchup, plus Roley gets low. His angles and different things. Yeah, listen, Boxing Guru, appreciate you for joining the podcast. Always, the thank you, Bless thank you, thank yes, you. Well, we'll, we'll see you at next. next. Yes, yes, I'll be at the next fight. Uh, Ryan Garcia? No, no, I'm going to Sam's birthday party in, in L.A. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be at uh, Canelo fight. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. then Tank fight after that. But on gotcha. uh, that weekend, I hate. I wanted to be in Brooklyn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see I'll you, Ryan. Okay, right. okay, thank uh, you. Appreciate Anytime. Bless, man. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, man. Good thing you ain't had a water. <laughs> Check the group DM. The, uh, the WhatsApp. Oh, no, I saw that. <laughs> Indeed, I saw that. Listen, um... <laughs> So oh we, got, we got we got we got two doing, things bro? here, really. Though. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Huh? We had that problem, exactly the same problem last time. Yeah. Hey, so how we fix this? This audio here, because he's he's catching my 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 he's catching my. Uh, Am I? Yeah, and I feel like I'm catching yours too. Go over there. Okay. I'll just move over. No, you, go all the way over. More. More. Yeah. You're still in the camera, so go over some more. Yes, this is your idiot. <laughs> Uh, we get a tweet from Ryan Garcia. He says, uh, <laughs> he hopes Devin Haney has comes to terms 
with uh, his, his, his demise, his death, if you will. He said that? Yo, yeah, yeah, no, 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 he said that. And, and, he, and he said, for the record, my guy, he said, for the record, I want to let you know that, that Bill said it first, but apparently Bill has said that they were going to kill him in the ring. And, uh, and, and, and now Ryan has, has, of course, clapped back and said, I'm coming to kill, I'm coming to kill uh, Devin. Oh, it's getting, all, it's getting like that? Yeah, it's like that now. Oh, we got to bring kill into it. You I always know, say I to me, oh, I need to stop about talking about people. Well, listen, now. I mean, it's a tweet. I'm trying to do the best I can oh, to well, share the tweet with, with, with everyone without. I didn't know you was a tweeter. The words is harsh, man. No, you know I'm not a tweeter. <laughs> no, okay. We need Carson. Carson's a tweeter. <laughs> but, uh, of course, saw the tweet. And, um. Do you take him serious? Ryan Garcia? Yes. No. Shout out to Ryan Garcia. Damn. What, all right, so here, listen. When I said, do you take him serious? These words. We all know, just like they up there on the stage right now, and, and again, like, I don't mean to disrespect anybody, but I feel like, I, you know, I want to get some work in with, with you and I right now. Um, but up there, they're just talking. Yes. Uh, we got to go to Roly, because, you know, Roly's Roly's a muscle head, so we got to go. I can give you the belt, but I can give you the chain if you want after the fight. So, Roly, are you going to put that chain on the line as well with your belt? No, he already got after I knocked his ass out. All right, so in terms of how much of a statement that would be, if you follow through on your prediction and you're able to knock out Isaac Pitbull Cruz, how big would that be for you uh, in your career? We can go ahead and just... Pass along the microphone. There you go. How big would it be if you're able to follow through on your prediction and knock him out? Because, I mean, he's very durable, very determined, went the distance with Javante Davis. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's a great opportunity that, uh, that I've been given over here. But in reality, the opportunity is for him to try to win the belt. I'm already champion. I don't need him. I'm the one that made this fight. It wasn't him. Right or wrong. Ooh. Well, you could have fought any variety of different guys, but why did you decide to settle on Isaac Cruz? Because I want to make a firefight. I want to make it fun. I want to make it fun for the fans. And this is the fight that all everyone's been asking for for the longest amount of time, right or wrong? Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay, right so. <laughs> well, let's talk about I'm doing, your I'm trainer. Doing, I'm doing everybody a favor right now. This is going to be a fun one. Y'all going to see it. Tune in March 30th, Amazon Prime pay-per-view. Ismael Salas, we've been seeing videos of you. You've been, you know, working with Ismael Salas moving around, doing a lot of feints and, and head movement. Uh, how much better do you feel with Ismael Salas that you guys are reunited? I think, I think we should just have Honestly, one Honestly, it feels these. great, you know? It feels like I'm, you know, that, that would happen yesterday. Like, like I'm back at home, <laughs> you know? Like I say, he, he had a big influence on my, you know, especially before, right before I turned pro. Like, literally, I got signed to Floyd literally, what, two weeks after I, uh, you know, I, I, I left the gym. So, I mean, he had a big influence on me and me being the fastest person to ever get signed to a major promoter as well. I started at 17, I got signed at 20. It's been an unbelievable journey. Rolando Rolly Romero, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's focus in on our main event. Sebastian Fundorum, you took this fight on 11 days notice. You were supposed to fight on the card. Now you have the biggest opportunity of your career. You can pick up two world championships as you go head to head against Tim Zhu. What kind of moment are you looking to have on Saturday night on PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video? This is the moment that Tyron Inferno becomes world champion. My sister did it six, six, six months ago. Now it's my turn. Did that really sort of invigorate you even that much more and everything else? I mean, we've heard it from fighters that you learn a lot when you have a stumble. Uh, how much has that impacted you as you prepare for the biggest moment of your career? You know, it, it, it happens in boxing, you know, uh, uh, um, I made a mistake, I paid for it. I feel like everything's still lined up the way it should be. Uh, uh, um, they gave me this opportunity to fight Tim Sue. This is gonna crown the best fighter at 154. All right, now let's go to the champion. We'll come back to you, Sebastian. Uh, Tim, you're gonna be facing a, a literally a very tall task. Uh, for those that don't know, we talked about it yesterday, but this is the largest height disparity in a non-heavyweight fight. So, Tim, you know, he's not, he's literally very tall, and, and you know he's awkward, and he has a significant reach advantage. Uh, how have you been able to prepare for that on such short notice? Well, look, it's, it's quite hard to prepare, especially when you go, well, 12 days. Uh, but a true champion 
just uh, rises to the occasion, adapts to everything that's put in front of them. So, you know, I came here as a, like a throwback fighter and I, and I keep trying to put it, and I keep trying to be like that, you know, I, I am, I'm living the person that I, that I speak. I'm not, I'm not a bullshitter. I'm, I'm here to do exactly what I, what I say. And, and this is why I take the fight. And this is why, like, yes, height, uh, of course, there's, there's, there's many advantages, but look, where we all bleed the same blood, so there's no difference between us. And and if if you know if you're watching history, Mike Tyson did a lot of damage in the heavyweight division back in the days. So I guess I'm taking inspiration from from Iron Mike in this one. Tim, for you, I remember when you fought Terrell Gachet in Minneapolis a couple of years ago, but. This is something that you've always wanted. It was, it was one thing to fight in the United States and, and headline, but you've always said about main eventing here in Las Vegas. Watching you during fight week, you look to be so relaxed, comfortable. You're dealing with the media obligations. Uh, you're taking it all in stride. Is it because you always knew that if you put the work in, that you would be here at this moment? Of course. You know, every, every as I said previously, every moment has led to this. This is my... 12th time doing pay-per-view so I'm, I'm used to this this bright bright lights and, and all of this stuff but i had a vision from uh, i guess from a young age uh in 2009 i came here to watch many pacquiao versus, versus miguel cotto and i remember i had a tweak i had a tweak in my in my brain saying that this one day this is where i want to be and now i'm walking into this press conference and miguel cotto sitting right here and i'm full fanboying i, I couldn't believe it <laughs> so you know like it's a, it's a crazy moment for me to, to be in this position, and, uh, and I'm taking it with, uh, with both hands. Sebastian, what kind of fight are you expecting out of Tim Zhu? We watched him last year. He went 3-0, and looked phenomenal in all three of his outings. But what kind of fight are you expecting out of him? I expect uh, the best fight from Tim Zhu. You know, this is, again, this is, I think, the best fight you can make at 154. He's uh, the number one in the weight right now. I think this... This fight with the unification of the WBO and WB, this will crown the new champion of the weight division. Tim, what kind of fight are you expecting from the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora? You know that he loves to mix it up on the inside. Are you expecting anything less? No, I, I feel like he's coming in for the brawl. He's good at what he does. He's got these long, lanky arms, and uh, I know the shots. It's all about eliminating what he's got and uh, showing what he's not good at, and, and, and that's the best thing about boxing is that he gets to expose my weaknesses and I get to expose his weaknesses. So it's, it's, it's going to be one, one hell of a barner, let's just say that. Sebastian, you're the underdog coming into this fight. Uh, does that motivate you at all? Is that sort of fuel for fire as you prepare on this opportunity on Saturday night, PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video? Uh, a lot of people say I have these advantages, and I do. I do have these advantages, but I always look at myself as the underdog. Even when I had the interim champion, I considered myself the underdog. So it's just time to prove again what we're made of. Is this sort of, have you even, you know, dreamt of how it could possibly be when you're able, if you're successful on Saturday, what holding both world titles would mean to you? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. This is my dream. This is my dream. I trained very hard my whole life to become and to fight on a stage like this. You know, uh, thank you to Samson. Thank you to Al Heyman for giving me the, the opportunity to fight on this, uh, to fight my dream. And uh, come Saturday night, the dream come true. Tim, finally, before we go ahead and conclude, is this, assuming that everything goes your way on Saturday, is this the official declaration of the Tim Zhu era here in the United States, main eventing in Las Vegas for what I'm sure you want to be many times moving forward? Yeah, for sure. You know, this is step one to, to where I want to be. Uh, this is only a, a little part, you know. I've already won this belt uh, with Mendoza. Uh, now we go for the second. It should have been me, Mendoza, fighting for those two belts already. So uh, I don't know why his belt's there. Well, why am I saying his belt? Why, why is the, that belt even there? But yeah, this is a new era, and uh, there's plenty of big, big super fights to be made in the, in the near future. All right, before I let these guys go, I'm going to start off with Angelina Cordova real quick. Prediction time. How's it going to end against Julio Cesar Martinez? ¿Cuál es tu predicción para eh, la, la pelea del sábado? ¿Cómo termina? ¿Knockout? ¿Puntos? ¿Cómo? Pues yo, la verdad, eh, no voy a decir nada. La verdad, lo que voy a decir, 
es lo que repetí el día de ayer. Eh, el RIM va a echar chispa. Así que bueno, muy pendiente, eso es lo que vos voy a decir. Muchas I'm not gracias. about to make a prediction, but I'm going to repeat what I said yesterday. You're going to see sparks fly. All right, Julio Cesar Martinez, your prediction against Angelino Cordova. Bueno, Julio, eh, también tu vaticinio. ¿Cómo termina esta pelea? ¿Por nocao, por puntos? ¿Cómo la ves? Pues venimos bien preparados, venimos como siempre lo he dicho, no venimos al 100, sino al 1000. Sabemos que es un peleador invicto, es, 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 es rápido y todo, venimos preparados para lo que sea pero como siempre a dar lo mejor arriba del ring y que los dos bajemos con bien y a dar un, una buen, un buen sabor de pelea. I want to give the fans a great fight. I hope that we both give, give them not just a great fight, but that we both come out healthy after that. I'm going to come out at not a hundred percent, at a thousand percent, and it's going to be fireworks. People are going to love it. All right, good luck to both men. Michael Zarafa, your prediction, sir, for Saturday. Come Saturday night, there'll be a new WBA world champion. Mark my words. Michael Zarafa predicting that he will be world champion. Ed is Landy Laram. How is the fight going to unfold against Michael Zarafa? Este. Vamos a trabajar duro el sábado, el 30 de marzo. Este, creo que se termina ante seis rounds. Creo que lo voy a ganar. I'm going to work hard, and I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to knock him out. And not only that, it's going to happen before the sixth round. Wow. Ed Islandi, a lot of predicting a knockout in the first half of the fight. Very interesting. All right, co-main event, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Your prediction is the second time the charm for going after a world title. Bueno, Isaac, la segunda es la vencida. ¿Cuál es tu vaticinio para, para esta pelea por el título? Bajando Isaac como nuevo campeón del mundo. Isaac Cruz is going to be the new world champion. All right, Isaac Cruz, a man of few words. Rolando Roli Romero, you've been saying knockout the entire promotion. How is the fight going to end on Saturday? Knockout, so he's going to wake up off the canvas from his dream of becoming world champion. All right, Rolando Roli Romero, the WBA super lightweight champion of the world, now main event, the town inferno, Sebastian Fundora. Your prediction for your main event showdown against Tim Zhu. Uh, the second we stepped into Las Vegas, we clocked in. You know, uh, I'm ready to put in my work and, and, and become world champion Saturday night. All right, Sebastian Fundora. Now, Tim Zhu, you are undefeated. How do you see the fight transpiring against Sebastian Fundora? As history will repeat, David versus Goliath, don't blink. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to all eight pay-per-view fighters. It is PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Keith Thurman That was the Keith Thurman line? Yeah, that was Keith Thurman. <laughs> Shout out to Keith, man. You think he learned anything from Keith during the promotion? He better. Like, that's what you do. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so, okay, I, I got to do this. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he said that was the Keith Thurman line right there. Yeah. Shout out to Keith. Uh, how's Keith doing? You checked on him, sent him a text? I did. I just okay. sent, sent so, him a text, and he said he was good, just taking it one day at a time. So. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, man. Th it's a three-month injury, sound like. So hopefully get Keith back by fall. Yeah, listen, man, um, let me just go ahead and do this real quick. I, uh -oh. you know, I came to your house. We had a nice little conversation. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think we have a, a, good, a good, firm understanding. Yeah. However, <laughs> what is it? If Keith hit me up tomorrow, uh -huh. said, hey, <laughs> I'm, moving to, I'm moving to Vegas. Uh-huh. Let me, let me get on your, pool, your, your podcast full time. Uh-huh. What you gonna do? We got room for another man on the couch. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, that's, 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 hey, come on, man. You gotta, you gotta know how you do this. Have Carson call him right now and say you wanna come back. Come on, Carson. Come on, Carson. Matter of fact, I'm gonna sit in your seat and rub my booty around uh. and get it warm for you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. All that being said, let's get back to the news at hand. Yeah. We're gonna push past Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney okay. and get to uh, what I saw, um, and, and, it, and it hyped me up instantly. What was that? Errol Spence Jr. Yeah, yeah. Shout out the tweet. I'm on my way to Vegas. I want the winner. You for I, it? No. I, and why? I, and you should be wanting to rematch with me. I, you know, I hold Earl at such a high standard because I think I pay attention to Earl when I realize this dude going to fight my boy one day. <laughs> and so I start paying attention to Earl. And yeah. I hold Earl at such a high – and I gain so much respect from him in your fight and yeah. fights – and actually, the, 
the Kell Brook fight where I gained the most respect for Earl Spence. I, I, I see and, that. And I know Earl's has been a dog, so as a dog, being from Texas and stuff, I thought Earl would say, let me get this right and go get back get back in there, get training with Derrick James, and get my get back with uh, – with Terrence Crawford. Uh, that's me saying what I, how I thought I knew Earl would be. As a man, no matter how bad a man beat me, I got to get my get back. Yeah. At least I got to try. Yeah. At least got to try. But uh, maybe that's not in his plans. And uh, everybody got their own plans in life. Listen, man, and I, 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 I am retired. So, I mean, like, I guess for the sake of words, take this with a grain of salt. Yes. I'm in a different space now than I've been – as you get older, you get wiser. Yes. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So at, at – at, uh, I don't even know how old I was when I when, when I fought Earl. I think I might have been 32 when I fought yeah, Earl or something yeah, like 32, that. 32, 33. 32, yeah. 33 when I yeah, fought Earl. 31. When that decision was announced, I mean the moment it was announced, I'm like, I'm like, I hate we got these gloves off. So let's run it back right now. Yeah, I'm hyped. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Let's go. But when you get a little bit older as I am now, you just take a look at the X's and O's. You say – what. What are the possible outcomes here? What what have you been through? What hasn't this guy been through? This I just think that, as as Errol Spence said, I'm coming out to Vegas and I want the winner. Yeah, move on. Because really? Be, move on because this one right here, that's in the class of its own. The worst thing you could do is try to go get your get back, and something similar nah, nah. happens. You got the worst. The nah, worst you got to show you me. Could, listen, the worst thing you could do uh-huh. is try to get your get back. And you do better, but you still don't win the fight. You know who that is. Every time you see him, he lets you know if you be if he beats you in anything. That's true. <laughs> Errol Smith better never see Terrence Crawford another day in his life. I'm gonna be honest. He better never see Terrence Crawford another day in his life. I've I've lost to him when it's little things. He brings it up every day. Yeah. He, that dude is not a dude. I don't like losing to you because you're annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it just so uh, my just competitive me say so you just accept like I I can be number two but I never can be number one. Well, you go on you go on to like like your basically your legacy your path has now just taken a turn okay. and now you've taken a turn into something big because you're moving up to 154. That's, that's it, it not Terrence Crawford who, big. It though. don't matter who wins this fight. Uh huh. You still put your money's right. Yeah. Hey man, and, get and, your money. And you instantly become a, a world champion again. Yes. And you instantly become a man in a different weight class. Uh, oh. And on top okay, of that, you okay. have another opportunity to show people I'm good at 154. I'm ready. You make believers out of anybody that wasn't a believer in you in an immediate rematch against Errol Spence Jr. Or excuse me, against against Terrence Crawford. Oh. Oh, this ends up with Terrence Crawford? Huh? This ends up with Terrence Crawford? What you thought it did? No. I said, see? Yeah, I see, like, I like see, that plan. See how it goes Because now, though, Terrence right? Crawford said he wants the winner, too. Terrence wants the winner. So they should fight it out. Well, I, we, we take a look at the business. The business is going to demand who gets to fight first. Yeah. Business-wise, you know I mean? business wise, I mean, there could be business-wise why I see Earl gets it over. Hey, it, is Tim Zoo a, a PBC fighter? No. Okay. Ooh. So, yeah, he may – because Terrence is willing to go. I know Terrence. He's willing to go to Australian fight. Absolutely. So, he might have the edge in that one. Absolutely. Right now, it's a toss-up. But then you still got – if Fandora wins, then I – so, Fandora wins, I get the edge to Earl. Tim win, I give the edge to Terrence. Ooh. Because of the business. Yeah. So, we will see. Okay. And I'm, I'm excited about this, hyped about this, and we will see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take we'll take Roly. Come on, bro. Yeah, sure, sure, real sure, tight, sure. real tight. Got you. Right here. Right there. We'll get you in and out there. Is that you? What's up, baby? Who the hell is that? No, that's a that's a pit bull. That's a pit bull. Oh, oh I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Zoom in on that right quick. Yeah, that's tough. Hold right it there. up. That's tough right there. That's yeah, tough yeah. right there. That's too much, big dog. How you feeling? I'm very feel. Bro, you look great. I see you. I see you work a little bit yesterday in, in the uh, in the ring as well. Like you look, you look great. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I feel comfortable. You yeah, feel good. Yeah, I feel good. Um, going back to Silas, I, I didn't even know that you started your, your career with Silas. Like, Silas was your original trainer. Yeah. As an amateur too, or just as a professional? As an amateur. Okay. And then when you turned pro, did you turn pro with him? No. 
you turned pro with um, with with Bullet. So going back to to Silas, like how how why was the number one? What was the reason for the move to go back to Silas? Um, I just you know I just felt back at home. Yeah. I want to go back home. And when you go back home, it it felt like you never left. Yeah, sure. It was like I never left. Yeah. And then of course when we talk about moving forward, all right, you back with Silas. Da 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 da. How? What has what has improved in your game? What, what's going to be different on fight night? We shall see. That, that's a good answer. No, that's, a, that's a good answer. That's that answer. That's a good answer. What's bro. changed, that's big dog? Answer. What are we going to say? Like, what are we going to see? Well, like I said, we shall see. March 30th, tune in. Buy the pay-per-view. How do you get a knockout against, against Pitbull? Uh, by punching him in the face. Well, well, what punch? Any of them. It's you left power in the left, power the, the, in the right. There's only like six punches. <laughs> Count them real quick. One, two, three, four. That, that was a knockout. Nobody you, worked? You knocked him out with the fourth one. I mean, like I said, there's only like six punches. No, I'm I mean, saying like nobody I, worked, though? I mean, you could throw any of those to the body. <laughs> nobody worked, you though? You could throw any of those to the body. What's the, what's, the, what's the recipe, though? What's the recipe? We shall see. Oh, you ain't going to give me nothing. So I'm looking forward to this, Roly. I want to see Roly. I think Silas gets the max out of guys. I seen what he did with Ugas. I seen what he did with Joe Joyce. I just think there's another side of Roly we haven't seen yet, man. So I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of sides of me you haven't seen yet. Okay. There's a lot. We'll see you Saturday night? Yeah. Okay. March 30th, by the pay-per-view. Okay. Good. All right, one more question, then we're going to let you go. Pitbull Cruz, is, it called, is there something different that you need to do against Pitbull? That, that, you know what I mean? What is there something unique that you got to do against Pitbull that otherwise you wouldn't have to do? Too many big words. Um, no, no, I understand the question. Okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not that, sl I'm not slow. I'm, t I'm I, I, I have a, I have a pretty high IQ. I so can comprehend got? things pretty easy. So what we got? No, I, I, no, no. I, I, the thing is, I'm just astonished to you asking such a moronic question. Like he comes right at you, just punch him in the face. He comes right at you, but it's all about timing too. You know Yo, I mean? exa so, exactly. He he fights at the same rhythm, or have you not seen his fights? He fights at the same rhythm. Okay, so just punch him in the face. Just punch him in the face. Just punch him in the face. Simple as that. He, he gets punched in the face a lot. It, it doesn't, and he gets punched in the face by these dudes that can't crack. So, yeah. That's the difference. Okay. There Appreciate we go. Appreciate you, Roly. Appreciate you, Roly. <laughs> Good luck, big dog. Right, Roly Romero, everybody. That's Roly. Uh, I heard last week uh -huh. that Roly was on what he's on right now, just... His energy's been just, different? Just, uh, just a little, un you know, he makes you a little uncomfortable. You know what I mean? So... I think that's you know that's what you get when you get rolling. I I, I knew that's what I knew what we have to do. <laughs> do what we have to do. It is what it is. I adjust to guys like that. Uh, if he's if he's not feeling comfortable, he's gonna make it awkward. Yeah. And it just kind of is what it is. <laughs> it's rolling. I I just hope he performs on Saturday night. I'm pulling for the kid. Uh, like the kid. Uh, love his energy behind the sport of boxing. So let's see. I think uh, um, going. To Silas's uh, uh, credit, uh -huh. and something that he did not say, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I don't. Number one, I'm gonna go on record for saying I don't know if he can execute the what Silas point? is showing. Ooh. I'm gonna go on record for saying that. What That's Silas is gonna show you how to do uh -huh. is take a step back to create distance and let go of a straight punch that meets your opponent right there where you need to. So that you can deliver a punch that's gonna stop that punch that that your opponent from coming after you. Okay. Roley has the power. We are we've seen that at 135. Yes. It 100% carries over at 140. Yeah. He's in a better position at 140 with his power than he was at 135. And in a lot of ways, he, he yeah he was punching some smaller guys, but now you know he's in, in 130 or uh, Pitbull is not a true 140 pound fighter. But does he have the timing, the eye? And like he just referred to, the IQ to, cr to create that space, to see that space, to see that timing, and execute what's being shown to him. I actually got him losing this fight by knockout. Okay. I'm, and, and, he, and, he, and, he's, and he has himself winning by knockout. Yeah. I don't believe he's, he's going to have the timing. I, I would like to see. He's still a young kid, fresh. I, I still think no one's ever pulled the talent out of Roley. I feel that. 
And I feel like if anybody can do it, Silas knows how to get into that kid, get into his fighters, bring the best out of his fighters, yeah. have his fighters ready for his opponent. Yeah. Uh, and I'm looking forward to Saturday night, a different role. He said there's many sides of Roley. I'd like to see two or three. Because it's going to take two or three to get this guy out of here. You're gonna have to, he said just punch him in the face. I think body work. Absolutely. I th yeah, thank you. I think you gotta you gotta bring the body work because you gotta slow him down. You gotta, bring you gotta the body hit work. him with some shit that make him respect you. Yeah. He also has to step around. You gotta move. Yeah. You can't just the what he. I know that's probably not what. At least I pray to God that's not his game <laughs> plan. To stand in front of him like he says. Yeah. And just punch. Yeah. That won't work. But if Roley can move, be, do Roley things, move like he did. Great movement in the tank fight. Yeah. Move, step around, throw, sit on something, throw something. Yeah. Move, step around. Yeah. Just, uh, but he's gonna have to gain respect that night. Be deep. He has to be aware of the defense. He has to keep his ish tight, Sean. Got to. That's the other thing. A lot of, I see a lot of young fighters. They want to get theirs off, but they ain't bringing it back. This, yeah, and that's the big. That's the big issue with a lot of these young fighters. You get a guy like like uh, Pitbull. You see everything that's coming at you. He throws big it's overhand rights, big left hooks. It's what you don't see. But when your stuff's not tight. Yeah. You're all about delivering it, yeah. and you're not tight on the on, on foot ready for the return. Yeah. Because he's right. We've seen Pitbull take a lot of punches to the mm -hmm. head, but mm -hmm. Pitbull has always come right back. So you yeah. gotta be ready for what's coming right back at you. You know. Yeah. Um, I would I would even venture to to, to bet that uh, that Roley may slow down. And you can't afford to do that against Pitbull. No, that's that's why I think Roley has to start with the body work, getting yeah. in there, digging digging to the body, yeah. slow him down. If if you can slow down Pitbull, he's there to be hit, Sean. At the end of the day, everybody who's who's beat Pitbull, which is only one guy, so, so Tank. But the but the, the the last fight that that uh, with that one Pitbull, hand, that, yeah, the last fight that Pitbull had, had where I personally felt like he got yeah. off box. Yep. It was because somebody knew how to move and knew how yeah. to stop and punch. Yeah. And that's what you got to be able to do against uh, against pit bulls. So, Roley's got, I think, half the recipe, which is the power. Uh -huh. The other half of the recipe is delivering that power, and you got to deliver it more than once. Yes. So, so, so it sounds like we got an exciting weekend of boxing. It sounds like the co-main event, we're going to be hyped. It seems like we got to start early on this this uh, this fight card because there's a lot of fights you will miss. Yeah. Was it Keron Davis? I heard him as I was driving in. He's on the on the card. I think he's uh before the main uh what the uh he's on he's a he's on the uh on YouTube the pre, -por the yeah. pre portion okay of the, of the prime um telecast okay against uh, Elijah Garcia and uh, Elijah that's a really, great that's a great fight Sean really exploded uh, last year on, on the scene and, and he he sounded a little um maybe maybe just fresh. You know, to, to the to the to the stage uh -huh. portion of boxing. You know, a lot of a lot of the fighters we you know we we, we grew up in this. We know how to do uh -huh. this. It's the talking and the promoting and stuff <laughs> like that that we got to learn how to do. And so Elijah said, you know, he kind of look. He sounded iffy up there, and I didn't really I would I didn't really dig that. But I think even though he seemed iffy up there, it's just because that's kind of the new arena for him. Yeah, I think this is a this is a great fight, Elijah versus. This is really going to test you. Uh, uh, go ahead. This is really going to test you, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Go gotcha. Uh, what's going on, man? Oh, perfect. He'll, he'll, what's going on? Love, what's up, no, man? man, no, man. You, Congratulations. Thank you, man. Sean, Thank I, I love you until Tim gets here, okay? Got, uh, I'm with you. I still love you once he gets here. But right. You have to get the just, to just during the time he's here, the love is gone. Before break down, and after. break down. Uh, why are you always making break down stuff? Because <laughs> it's, it's literally that's how I start. Trust him. All right, good, good, good. Break down All the right, main event. Plus, good. he don't never really have time. Okay. I got. You got to go with Tim Zoo. He uh, Sebastian Fundora doesn't use his height, um, and he's gonna let Tim Zoo in his chest, and that that Tim Tim's gonna have the advantage there. And he's a really sharp, compact, accurate, pretty explosive, kind of underrated hand speed. Good puncher, not a home run hitter, but a, a, a triples hitter, double yeah. and triples hitter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't watch football. Give me a, or I don't watch baseball. Give me a football analogy. Um, he may not. He gonna try to feel. He, he not. He not gonna. He he's not gonna take. He's not gonna take it to the house on the eighty yarder. Yeah. But he can. Yeah. He can catch some balls down the field. Yeah. yeah he can get yeah. down the field a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's not Randy Moss yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of punching power, yeah. but he, he's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and he's got a little bit of. Sh the Shannon Sharp of boxing. 
<laughs> yeah, Shannon. <laughs> well, well, you know something. Yeah, but, um, he, he know who he, he's got a little bit of Canelo in him in terms of body frame. He's, his pull counter, his flexibility up top is getting better each fight as yeah. he started fighting the Americans yeah. like Tony Harrison, Terrell Goucher. Those yeah. guys made him tighten up on defense. Yeah. So, yeah, he applies intelligent pressure. Fondora is going to let him right into his wheelhouse. And I, I think I think Zoo wins the fight, but it's, it's a war. I got one for him. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 go. Who does it benefit more, the short notice? Fondora. I, yeah, I agree. Fundora, you're going from Keith Thurman, who's 5'7", five, 5'8", five, is going to move around the ring, circle the ring, to a 6'6 six, six brawler. Uh, I think I think it helps Fundora a little bit, if anything. But see, you you came at it from a different le angle, though. You said a 6'6 a six foot, six foot six brawler. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, everybody's talking about him being 6'6", six six, being a softball. I'm like, well, he's he going to do half the work for you. He's going to come down to your level, and then he's going to do the other half of the work, which is not use a softball stance and style to get you lured into a straight left or to, to, to check hook you. No, he's just going to want to take your head off with left uppercuts. He's yeah. just going to let you right in. He'll throw the jab a little bit, but <laughs> come in, come in, and he just wants to 4-3. Does, right? does he have the timing for Tim Z? Fondora? Yeah. He's not really a timing he's fighter. No, yeah. He's fighting. He, 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 he's just putting them together. Oh. But I'll say this for Fondora in his, in his credit. Before he got knocked out by Mendoza, which is a fight he was winning every single second. Dominating of, the fight. Before he got yeah. knocked out. This was basically a 50-50 fight. And oh, yeah. 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 I, I got it 50-50 now, but yeah. And Zhu wasn't anxious to fight this guy. He wanted to get straight to the Charlo fight. I remember asking him when Charlo knocked out Castano in L.A. He said, what about this Fundora fight? You know, that, that would pretty much clear cut number one contender. Because at that time, sure. you could argue... Who was more deserving, Fundora or Zoo? Yeah. So I remember asking Tim about taking that fight. No, 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 we just want the Charlo fight. Yeah. So that's not, I'm not saying Zoo didn't want the smoke, but it was like, a, I, I'm good on the 6'6 six, six Southpaw. Yeah, I want the title fight. It's an awkward, yeah. tall test. Right. I think he was ready for the big time. He, he was. the big time. I think that's what it was, you know? He was, but I like my boogeymen to fight other boogeymen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Antonio Margarito, <laughs> Paul Williams. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Speaking of boogeyman. Uh, the, the the pound for pound king said he wants to win her. Yeah. Earl just put out a tweet said he wants to win her. Yeah. I want Earl to go back and get Terrence. Do do, do what you can. Now, now I ain't go don't go get him. Do what you can. <laughs> uh, uh, what, I, I, what do you think about Earl? Do I mean he lost the luster? Yeah. It's not the same Earl Spence coming off the energy of Sean Porter fight and all yeah. that. It's it's Earl Spence, but it it ain't Earl Spence. Right. It's little fish. Right. I mean, he took a hellacious beating, man. He took yeah. the kind of beating that your daddy gives to permanently you. change your career. Yeah. And then, you know, all respect to Errol, but you hear about some outside the stuff he's acknowledged outside the ring, lifestyle choices, yeah. getting down to 147, perhaps a little too long and just suffering a, a terrible car accident and the beating that Crawford gave him. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot. I, I think. I'm like most people, you know, I doubt we ever see the Errol Spence that far Sean again. Or, or And honestly, Sean, I felt like he was even a little better right before fighting you against Lamont. And his legs were Lamont was like not as strong when you fought him in 20. He was already beginning to not look now as you messing, Don't say that. Yeah, yeah, now just, you messing up what I did, I know, I know. what we did. And you still lost. <laughs> Would you agree with that, or am I tripping a little? Uh, you tripping. Okay. I don't know. To be but honest, I, 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 I said answer, I don't know. Yeah. His best performance yeah. is Kell Brook. Yes. He dogged it out over there. And, and Lamont Peterson. Yeah, Lamont Peterson. And no comp like that era, 2017, 2018. But again, you got to also talk about the, 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 the other side of it. Lamont wasn't strong enough, and Lamont didn't have enough for him. You know what I mean? So no. what you saw against me May have been present already. You just didn't know it. You know what I mean? I just I think you just fought a great fight that night. Absolutely. Like, yeah, you did. Um, uh, you got you got a problem because you got but, uh, Tim I coming and you got right the back. I coming. see what's happening. All right, yeah, go uh, do your thing. Love you, do your man, thing. Man. All right, now. Love, love Porter Way. Uh, right. Wait, he didn't answer the question because I want you to say what I said what? without me saying it. What was it? So that, so, that, so that I know that I'm right. What was it? Should Errol Spence move on? From Crawford? Yeah. Absolutely. Boom, boom. Yeah, All right, yeah, go. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> All right, get out of here. All right. You, you right here, sir. You right here, sir. Right here. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Good. How you doing? Bless us. Nice to see you again. Your name is? Anthony. Nice to see you, Anthony. You got How's your dad? Forgettable. No, no, no. That's what you oh, is. Right. Good, good, good. How's your dad? Good, good. Thank you for asking. Tell him I said hello. I will. I will. I'll let him know you're in town. Maybe you we can get to together. The fight? Uh, I, I'm 
<laughs> yeah, man, I'm not, I'm not positive yet. I'm not positive yet. Perfect. Will do. I got you. Uh, everybody, we got Jim Lampley. Let me read it right now. Jim Lampley returns to the ring, co-hosting the popular live view chat in the real time, exclusively on PPV.com's high def live stream of Saturday's Tim Zoo versus Sebastian Fundur World Championship fight. It's on PPV.com, y'all, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That being said, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Sean. How are you? Back working. <clears throat> back working. You, you're back ready working. To, ready, to, ready to see another fight. And uh, Tim Zhu is at the table right over there about 12, 15 feet away from us. And, yeah. Um, it's the first time I've actually seen him in person. Okay. And I am um, in awe of the resemblance between him and his dad. That's he has, he has so much a photographic reproduction of his father. Uh, at least from this angle. It's yeah. pretty amazing. <laughs> Have you met his brother? No. Nope. Um, his brother's running around too, Nikita. I mean, one, two, three. They look so similar. Yeah. And his brother's a softball. I know his dad was a softball, I right? feel a certain poignancy about it because I, I called uh, his father's only fight in this hemisphere yeah. on a night when everybody <laughs> expected him to wipe out Vince Phillips. It was supposed to be a perfunctory title defense, go right through this guy, start establishing yourself in uh, this part of the world, and boom, Vince landed the one right hand, yeah. a lightning shot. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, worst night of uh, of Costa Zoo's career. Sure. You, you were there on the night that he fought uh, Zab Judah as well, though, right? Zoo? Yeah. I don't recall that. Oh, you weren't thinking that, that wasn't on <laughs> I, 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 uh, I think on that was show. on Showtime. It must have been on Showtime. I think that was on Showtime. Yeah. I, I believe that I only called the one Costa Zoo fight yeah. the night that he got caught by Vince Phillips. When, when, so working now for PPV.com, again, you guys, that'll be Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Working for PPV, do you get ready for the telecast like you would back in the day? I don't prepare in exactly the same way that yeah. I did back in the day. Okay. It, you know, when you're calling blow by blow, uh, you really have to have every single piece of information locked down and, and have an encyclopedic base sure. to feel the, the command and the credibility that you want to have to call blow by blow. I'm not calling blow by blow. I'm um, commenting in a live chat, and it's more a matter of responding with my own history and sensations to what it is I see in front of me. Sure. Uh, if I make comparisons to the past from fights that I called, that's something that is interesting to the audience. Uh, they've got a blow-by-blow -blow commentary that they're listening to. You know, they, they bought the live pay-per-view, and so somebody else is doing blow-by-blow. -blow. Yeah. So that's not my job. Yeah. My job is to apply an editorial perspective that's interesting and illuminating and not wall-to-wall. Blow by blow is a little bit more wall to wall yeah. uh, than what I do. Got anything? Uh, I just wanted to ask you, how all those years when a moment's happened in fights, you allow yourself to just stay even toned? I watch boxing now, and it's hard to even watch the commentators. Sometimes I want to mute it. But when I went back to you, it's just like you enjoyed. No disrespect to you either. Well, first but of you all, enjoyed it. what a privilege it was. I yeah, mean, sir. when I first... I first called fights on ABC, uh -huh. and uh, I, I was looking at a lot of different fighters on ABC, but the primary piece of content for us at that moment was Tyson, and yeah. I, I called Mike's first five or six television exposures, and that was the heart of the story for us, and then I moved from ABC to HBO. Now, HBO was already established as mm -hmm. the preeminent platform. I moved to HBO because Tyson moved to HBO. Okay. And, you know, I had a, had a connection to Mike through uh, ABC, and now HBO wanted me to come over there and call his fights. And, and the ancillary privilege was, oh, I'm not just calling uh, Mike Tyson now. I'm calling Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm calling Roberto Duran. I'm calling uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Legends. I'm calling all of these other great stars whom I had not previously seen and called. Uh, so I got that, that sense of self, mm -hmm. that security, that uh, feeling of advantage that comes with knowing I'm sitting in the most important chair in the sport yes. for, a, for an editorial commentator. Mm -hmm. I am I am doing the biggest thing that a commentator can do. I'm going to shake Tim Zhu's hand. No problem. No you. problem. How are you? No problem. All right. You look so much like your dad. It's eerie for me. It really is. <laughs> Great to see you. Um, 
But at any rate, you know, in the H in the HBO chair, every time I sat down, put on that headset, said to myself, I have a truly exalted position in boxing, and I'm going to, I'm going to revere it. I'm going to honor it. I'm going to make sure that this is always at the highest level at which it can be. So one thing I wanted to portray was dignity. All right, I'm not going to be uh, self-satisfied enough or egotistical enough to tell you that I was accurate and good in portraying <laughs> dignity, but I tried, uh, and and it did it on behalf of a very dignified employer. Uh, and what you're referring to, I think, was a certain security and and sense of self that came from being in what was very clearly at that time the number one commentary position in boxing. Yeah, no question. Beautiful, no beautiful, question. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Happy to have you back in, in Las Vegas. We'll catch up offline. Um, enjoy the telecast with ppv.com. Again, guys, Saturday. Before I get up and go, what's going to happen in the fight, Sean? Tell oh, me. Oh, um, I, I have Tim <laughs> Zhu winning this fight possibly by knockout. I think so, too. I think he's going to be able to time uh, uh, Sebastian Fondora. I think Fondora, Fondora has one speed, one, one, um, one rhythm. And uh, and he's right there in front of you. Doesn't give you any. But, but can any we agree? Do you agree with me that Fandora is a uh, a more interesting and and possibly more unpredictable opponent than Keith Thurman would have been? No, no, I think, no, no. He wasn't more unpredictable. Keith was the more unpredictable. I think he's the more exciting fighter. I think with with Tim Zhu and Keith Thurman, we might we may have had some true lows in the in the fight. This one, we won't get any loss. We're going to get Sebastian doing So he's he a better opponent. He's a funner opponent. Fun, funner fun opponent. Is not even, okay. Fun is not even a, wor a word, but he's but, a funner No, but opponent. that makes sense. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. All right. Thank you, Anthony. All right, man. Thank you, Sean. Jim Lampley will be Real live privilege. on PPV.com. PPV.com, Saturday baby. night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Listen, get on that because it's a live chat. You get a chance to to interact with with Jim Lampley and the whole PPV.com crew. So we want to thank Jim for, for joining the podcast. Living legend. Thank you, guys. No problem. You smacked the hell out of him. <laughs> no, they give it. They give it. Oh, his paper. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you got it. <laughs> why would you want to? You were just a black person like to steal. I was. That, that is no. That was, was no. That was I'm no not, reason to keep that. I can't get an autograph. That was no reason to keep that. It Man, wasn't even an autograph listen, on it. Listen, I don't get. <laughs> just, I don't get opportunities. That was no to do reason. Live live reads like that all right so that was that's special for me to do uh, what's going on man um uh, I, I i love jim's energy man. i love the fact that he hasn't he still changed wants to, yeah just get out and move and be a part of this game as he said i mean i got the whole story but as he said he started on abc when he was young mm -hmm. um and uh and and to go from abc as a young man and as he told the story he basically was going someone at abc didn't like him and was sending him to HBO, expecting him to fail. And now, oh. we, and now no, we, he said he went with Tyson. But do you heard that? But part? they were, at, but they were expecting him to fail. Oh. Nobody knew Tyson at that point. Okay, so okay. They, they thought this was just gonna blow up in his face, and it actually ends up blowing him up. So, uh, for him to be able to come on live with us and, and always share those stories is always, uh, is always a, a great time. Hey, yo, Jay Sharp, we will be in Brooklyn uh, for Devin Haney versus. Um, versus, uh, excuse me, uh, Garcia, uh, Ryan Garcia. Yeah. We better see you, big dog. We better nice see you. Nice to in person, man. Yes, sir. Oh, right, How you doing, nice man? You, man? Yes, sir. Good to see you. Welcome to the Port Away Podcast again. Tim Zhu, how yeah. you feeling, man? Yeah, I'm good. I'm nice and relaxed, man. Is it is, is the energy, is everything what you expected it to be, more or less? Yeah, you know, like, I felt more tense in Australia. Like, this is uh, less, less tense for me, like, yeah. more relaxed. Like, I feel like. It's a different stage and uh, something completely different, but I feel in a different state of mind. I think the, 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 the expectation, the shift, there's a shift in the expectation. I think at home it's like the responsibility is so much greater at home than it is when you're being here in Las Vegas. I think the responsibility is more so just to yourself. Mm. You're here now to do what you said you wanted to do. Yeah. And I think now it's just time to perform. Talk to us a little bit about the 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 the, the the transition of going from Keith Thurman to now Sebastian Fondor. Yeah, it's it's just one week. One week I've had uh, three spas. I had uh, 10, 10, 6. Uh, no, 10, 12, 6. I had uh, rounds of sparring. And uh, I felt confident. It felt good. And everything felt on point. 
question for you. Did you guys rush to find some 6'5", 6 6'3", 6 6 6 kind of guys, or did you just stay with what you had? No, nah, we, we flew in Michael Fox, 6'5", yeah, and go. this other guy, 6'4". Uh, yeah. Uh, so the bo both boys gave me uh, good work. Yeah. I, I told Sean I'm more excited for this fight. I felt Keith Thurman was going to move. He wasn't going to exchange yeah. with you all night. No, he, he said he was, but yeah, we yeah, all know he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I, so I feel like we're getting a more energetic fight and a bigger fight. Yeah. And last time I talked to you on the podcast, you God destined, you keep cleaning out 154. Exactly. <laughs> so you're back at this position. Are you, you feel like this is a more exciting fight than the Keith Thurman fight? Yeah, I think stylistically it's um – like it could go both ways. Like it could be yeah. a hard, tough, grueling fight, but it also could be a type of fight that's the target's e actually easier to find. You know, yeah, yeah. saying like saying it weirdly, like yeah. the target is there, yeah. yeah, rather than a target that's always moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and let's set the record straight. I'm not gonna say who said it, but somebody came on the show and said once upon a time they asked you about a fight with Sebastian Fondora. You said, Nah, I want the Charlo fight. Was that a fight? Is this a fight at one point in time that you didn't really want, or is it just at that point in time you wanted something else? Yeah, I was I was just chasing the Charlo. That's all I was oh, doing. I was chasing Charlo the whole time. I didn't say it. Don't, <laughs> get me <laughs> knocked out. <laughs> Jesus. Don't nobody listen. <laughs> okay. How do you how do you think this fight's gonna go? I think uh, strategically I gotta uh, get rid of his uh, strengths. Yeah. He's got a couple punches that are you know. Um, that he's got that are, that are quite good. So when you eliminate that, um, you can work with him. I think he's, his legs are quite long, you know? Yeah. His legs are very long, actually, yeah. you know? Yeah. So uh, footwork will be a big part uh, in this game and positioning and uh, distance and range. Ever been in the ring with somebody six, 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 five? Well, Michael, Michael, Michael J. Fox, he was six foot five. Forget him, <laughs> But man, in a fight, him. in a yeah, fight, yeah, yeah. no, I know, I know, I haven't. No. Have you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used to knock him out. Oh, Let's beautiful. Go. Let's go. It's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> good, luck. good luck on Saturday nah, night, thanks. my man. Yeah. Looking forward to the fight. And uh, happy to have you here. I nah, appreciate it, guys. Nothing but bless man. Congratulations. I'll see you later, yeah. man. Good dude right there. Uh, yeah, man. I, th I think if you went back and look at what I did as both an amateur and a pro, y'all might actually be like, yo, this dude was. That's not the same guy. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. But I, I mean, that's out, how it goes, though. I knocked so. out 6'6 six, six when I was 19. But you got to think, you was just raw. Just, I'm going I'm I'm to kill her. I'm going to kill her. No, I wasn't. Yeah, just, not in the amateurs. Oh, okay. You, had, like, your, you had your ears together? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so then you went back down when you like come Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, well, that's, <laughs> that's so funny. Like, it was, it was amplified as a pro. But when you think about oh, it, like, man. smaller gloves, like, yeah. Bigger moment, yeah. you know. It was like a lot of things, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it took time to really just hone in on, on the energy and you know the moments and 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 really trying to you know just work your way through things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, together. <laughs> you can't peak as as, as an amateur <laughs> then start of, back over. A lot of fighters peak as amateurs, oh. which is which is unfortunate. It's always funny because a I, lot of fighters peak I, as amateurs. I never want to be disrespectful, but I hear you sometimes mention guys on the amateur scene that you've seen that was a problem and i'm yeah. like they peak as an amateur because playing football i know guys that peaked in high school and never got better Damn. and i know guys peaking high school in life yeah and now are losers <laughs> don't be that guy okay don't be that guy how many people <laughs> go ahead go ahead go ahead, go ahead. How, how many you talk about anybody in your family oh yeah yeah i got people <laughs> in my family peak I, I might have brothers and sisters that peaked in high school have you when did you peak uh, I'm I'm peaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Think about my life when you met me. Look, I'm peaking now. I got yeah. a, I'm a family man. Got the yeah. I'm peaking right now, baby. Make this announcement while we got a second. I what was, you want to say? I was talking to you. Oh, okay, you know? okay. Go back to the conversation. Well, so you we can't had. say everything I told go, you. No, but go back to the conversation we had the other day. I said uh -huh. I came up with this idea about a week ago. I said, man, I think it would be good to get a one-on-one -on -one interview with Ant. I think a lot of people. They know you from the podcast, but they don't know you like they know me. Like yeah. you, there's so much that you've seen of me through the years, and you've seen they've seen now going on four years of you. I would love to give these people a one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview okay. with you talking about you, talking about your life, your upbringing, yeah. ups and downs, the list goes on. You know, I, I, I use my life and my experiences, and, 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 I, and I know that my fight, my fights have served as inspiration uh -huh. to people in life. And um, 
I know I've shared that. I'm pretty sure I've shared this with you before. Somebody came up to me and said, bro, me and my dad, we didn't get along. Mm -hmm. We always had issues. But whenever you got in the ring, we always got together at, 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 at his house or at my house. And we watched Amazing. the fight. Said, man, your, your fights kept, kept me and my dad together. Uh -huh. And your fights changed our relationship and made it stronger. You know what I mean? So I would hope that something that you bring to, to an interview that I yeah. did with you would, would, would push somebody forward. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, I got stuff. I got stuff to say. He said, I got <laughs> I got stuff to say. I got, I got, got some issues I went through a couple times. You know, we all we all have a story. At the end of the day, we all here because we have a story. Yeah. My man DDA got a story. You got a story. We all got a story. Yeah, DDA. D <laughs> DDA, DDA got it, a story. Now, DDA might be the most famous person here yesterday. All the pictures. He didn't realize they were taking pictures of him. If y'all could oh, see oh, his okay, setup. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, if, if he knew y'all <laughs> was taking pictures of him, he might cuss y'all out. Yo, but, yeah, this is my, hey. So we got we got something coming for you guys. We got I don't even know what you call it. The the D, what's going on? The Levitt Legend. How you doing, man? Nah, you the man, man. I'm just trying to grow old, get a beard like that. You you look. I like can't even get a beard. To do. You want to sit down for a second? Sure, <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to grow old, be like you, man. Go ahead, Ant. Did you yeah. see I had him on yesterday? Yeah. When you left? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. You about to get a picture right now. <laughs> People don't care when you working. Yeah. No, they don't. They don't care about nothing. <laughs> hey, with your my family? Daughter, my daughter's good at this, though. She, she like, excuse me, can't you see that he's sitting down with his daughter? <laughs> uh, I like what I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to say this name. I think it's they who for you. Uh, I think that's what it says. But he says, this could be a moment for Fundora. I just wish he had some sweet feet. Right. Otherwise, the dude got real pop to be so tall and thin. I saw pop yesterday. Talk, can, you, can you talk to us about uh, Sabat? What do you think about his power? He got good power. Yeah. He got good power. You want to talk about that fight? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go, go yeah. for it. I'm, I'm hyped about this Roly Pitbull fight. I want to see what Salas you and me both. <laughs> is bringing out of Roly. Most we, definitely. He... Obviously, they they have some history together. Yeah, that's right. And you know, w working you know early on, and he's went back to some some basic things that he's kind of gotten away from. Mm -hmm. You know, he he's always gonna have an unorthodox unorthodox style, mm -hmm. um, but it's gonna be Pitbull's gonna be in for a rude awakening. Okay. I, I I think he's been carefully matched. I know yes. that firsthand. Yes. Um, oh yeah, you would though. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's supposed to look like the way it's, uh -huh. it's looked, and and now this is a tremendous matchup for both of the guys. Mm -hmm. You know, Roly finally gets to get to fight a guy that he's just coming straight ahead. Yes, straight ahead. There to be hit. Yeah, there to be hit. So you just gotta discourage him from running his little behind up in there. If if uh, Tank Davis doesn't hurt his hand and this that fight doesn't go twelve. Does, 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 is Pitbull Pitbull? No. I, <laughs> I'm just being honest. I don't want to be I'm, I, and, 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 and me neither. But I'm just being honest is that, you know, it's, it's, everyone knows it's well documented that he came in with a hurt hand into the fight. But fighters, that's what they do. They, I can't think of one fighter that I know that's ever came into a fight 100%. Uh, just 100%. I ain't feeling no bumps and bruises through training camps because it's grueling you know the, the the hard part is getting through camp mm -hmm. you know day in and day out the rigors of just the sparring and just, yeah you, you know what I mean it's 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 tough so again he came into that fight with, with, a, with a jacked up hand you know he didn't want to pull out uh -huh. and he went through and then he re-injured it in in the fight and you could see it yeah you could yeah you could see it and um but again that was then Saturday night. Saturday night. We gotta, and it's, you better get there early. If you come, if you're in, if you're in Vegas, you're buying tickets. Get there early, cause we got a lot of young guys getting in there. Oh, without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. But I, I, you know, I can't, I can't get, I can't get the Floyd. So I got a question for you. They, these guys don't think it's funny. <laughs> Why? Do, Floyd's my favorite fighter. All okay. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> let's start it off. <laughs> Why the hell you had me thinking Robert Garcia had a chance? Robert Guerrero had a chance. <laughs> I've been saying this to these guys for about 10 years. Right. 
Why? Why? Uh, why evidently, I must have did a good man, job with promoting the like, event. <laughs> this motherfucker really had me thinking Robert Guerrero had a chance. I'm worried. I was I, nervous. I look at him. I say Robert Guerrero. Yeah, Robert Guerrero. He said, "I didn't know." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that boy, well, y'all used to sell the hell out of them fights. I yeah. didn't do that. Do you, you have, did your job? Do you have any any fighters that you that have that you enjoy promoting? That like you can't outside of I, I think Tank kind of. He does a he does a great job himself like yeah. nowadays. But are there any fighters you're like, man, I, I we we have fun every time we go we go to do this thing. Roly. Roly. Yeah, but <laughs> Tank, Tank's my guy and always gonna be my guy because it speaks for itself. He's Tank. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know he he's a man of yeah. few words, but he just shows. It. But Roly is Roly is, is is different. Yeah. Man, and I can honestly say this is that you know as a as a as a fighter, you know. Um, I, I really like him. I really like him as a person. You know, this, he is the only fighter that checks on me. Okay. That's big. And man. That's big. In 27 years, he's the only fighter that checks on me. That's big. Like, and that, that means a lot to me personally. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. and, and I'm not talking about for no fights. He called me, what's up, boss man? Just call and check on you, see how you and the family doing, yeah. blah, blah, blah. He calls me all the time. That's what's up. Just checks in just yeah. and, don't, and don't want nothing. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, that. so, so I, I mess with a person like that. I, I'm glad you gave us that because that's my thing with my podcast. I want to expose these people, this audience, to things that they don't know about these fighters. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's kind of where, where the podcast even came from as it pertains to me. I wanted to start showing people that we're we're smarter than you think. Yes. We speak better than you think. We got stories that y'all don't know about. We got more character and more personality than, than y'all ever knew. You know what I mean? So I'm so happy that you – he came over here, man, and was just – he has moments where he's just a straight-up goofball, and it's like, Roley's <laughs> being Roley's being awkward. Roley's being Roley. And it's like you would never have thought that somebody like him takes time and out of when, his when day. When I say consistently, consistently just calls and <laughs> – don't want nothing. Just call, boss man. Hey, I just called to see how your day was going, yeah. to see he's, you know, you know, see how you and the family was doing. You know, I don't want, I don't want anything. Yeah, a little itch like that matters. Man, it it's just like, yo, it's like he's the only one that's ever done that. Yeah. And and it's not that other fighters, everybody cares. Yeah. You, you know, and and because one thing about me, they know. One thing about me, if I deal with you, not just with fighters, just friends, you know, my lady, any, anybody, yeah. it's like. I'm I'm with you. Yeah. Like I go hard. Like yeah. I'll take the bullet. I'll just I'm always gonna defend you. I'm your guy. I'm like always, and that's just the only way I know how to get down. Yeah. You you know what I mean? I'm I'm gonna fight for you. It's just it's because I'm just with you. You know. And and so he sees that. And, uh, you know everybody else does too. But everybody else carries things differently. Yeah. And it's just little things like that that mean a lot Absolutely. to me. Like Absolutely. a lot. Like he was. He was really, really dejected, um, depressed, um, coming off the loss. We were on the flight together um, five hours from New York, yeah. five and a half hours. We talked the whole time. Talked the whole time. He's just, you know, a lot of things, is, you know, shared some personal stuff. And, you know, and it, it was, it was, I think it was the turning point for him because it was just like, he just couldn't get over, like, they, what he had just got knocked out. Da, da, da. I said, look, you lost to the best, in my opinion, Tank's the best fighter in the world, mm -hmm. okay? And you lost to definitely the best guy in the division. Yeah. So it's like, you got to chalk that up, and it's like, you ain't going to get in the ring with nobody else like a Tank. You done been through the tough, hard part, so pick your head up, and look, we got to keep it moving. Yeah. We got we to keep it moving. This is just a part of life, but how you how you going to, how you going to, Move forward from this. Mm -hmm. Are you going to sit down and just, you know, are you going to pick your head up and like, okay, there's another day. And that's why you notice is that he learned and he, what he was saying about Tank afterwards. He was like, look, I got a lot of respect for the guy because I taught him that. I was like, yeah. look, you can't sit there and say this and that about, like I said, the better man won, and there's nothing to be ashamed of that. Mm -hmm. It's like when your career is over, you shared the ring with greatness, Shared the ring with greatness. You came up short, but you did that. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Go on and, and beat the rest of these guys we put in front of you. Mm -hmm. You ain't got nothing to be ashamed about. Speaking but, of Tank, 
Are we getting tanked this summer? Of course you're going to get in. Where we get, where, where we at? Can you speak on where we uh, at? I'm, I'm, he going to let you know. Okay, okay. He, okay. he going to let you know when, okay. Okay. And where, how? and who it's going to be. Oh, we, we don't got an opponent? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he got to let you know that. Oh, okay. We, we do and we don't. Yeah. Right. No, 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 no. We don't. You know, you know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tanks the boss, man. He yeah. got to let you know. He got to. No, hey. He, he <laughs> mad because he ain't moved like that. <laughs> <laughs> Question for you. Hopefully, you can set this record straight. Hopefully. Um. How comfortable – and I, I'm going to answer half the question because oh, sure. I, I don't want you to, 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 to take me around in those circles. I already know you're going to go where the best fights are, where the most money is, where the most eyes are. I already know that. Mm -hmm. But how comfortable is Tank Davis at 135 opposed to fighting at 140? Well, what I've been saying all along, Tank can make 130. Mm. The first day of camp, first day of camp, Three weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I think the world saw this. He stepped on the scale. He was 138 and a half. No, I missed that. Oh, you didn't see it? It's nah, out there. They, Google they it. Or first, yeah. first day. First day. Again, they thinking of the old tank, the tank that that that, that fought. Um, the young. They thinking of the young kid. Yeah, yeah. Who was undisciplined? He's a man. You know, just find, trying to find his way. Tank. That's the old tank. Tank is about his business. He understand. He's a professional now. And he's had some ups and downs, and he's learned for he's a family guy now. The whole, the whole nine. And it's like, but more, he's just a naturally small guy. Mm -hmm. And again, he don't walk around 30 pounds over his, his weight. He don't do that no more. Yeah. He stays around his weight. Yeah. You know, and again, first day, and it's like, the first thing I'm saying is like, put on some weight. You think, <laughs> you think we see him at 130? No, I don't think you see him at 130. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's any, at the moment, yeah, I don't the, think there's a, a reason to go there and yeah. and do anything. Yeah. Now, I'll just throw out a hypothetical. Sure, 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 if sure. The, if the little guy who in your way, if the, the, they, he is that guy. He can fight his behind off. Yeah, he can yeah, fight, yeah, yeah. He can. Now, if for some, this is a hypothetical. I don't want people yeah. thinking that. Oh, I'm suggesting that yeah. they do all of that. But if for some reason he came to 130. That's one you go for. It makes sense. Oh, all it day. Makes sense. That's, that's uh, all, all day. Yeah. All day. That's one you go for. Lena Ellaby makes money off of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the next mega fight in boxing Devin Haney versus Tank Davis? The, the mega fights are with Tank Davis. Ooh. <laughs> you ain't know the answer. Oh. Yeah, you know, you know, know the answer. I, that. I, I didn't know that. No, I didn't know he was going to give me that. No, I didn't know he was going to give me that. Tank, tank again. <laughs> I didn't know that. Tank gonna do what he want to do. Okay. okay. Wherever Tank go, that's where that's where it's yeah, at. That's the, and that's the that's the truth. He's the one calling all the shots. Yeah. He's a, but like I always tell all my fighters is that when you're in that position, you're dictating the terms. Don't don't let nobody tell you and anything differently. You know, because there'll be a lot of noise out there saying yeah. that you no, you do what you're supposed to be doing. Can, and if and if somebody want it. Then they're going to do it on his terms, whatever that means. And it's always going to be on his terms. Okay. And even if that means the fight don't happen. We good. We good with it without him. Tank's good. We good with it tank, without him. Tank, tank, because he's going to get the guys that he want to get, they know who they are, mm -hmm. and he's going to get them. Where's the next fight? When? Where? <laughs> he can't say. <laughs> <laughs> can't say where are you? No. He's going he gonna to let you know. All right. right. He's going to let you know. He's going to let you know. All right. We're gonna let you know. We uh we really do, man. We enjoy seeing Tank in the ring. Yeah. Um, I've seen, I've I've watched Tank mature in the last two years. Man, big and I, time. And I really do uh, like the, the the position that he's in. You got another young man coming right behind you. Talk to us a little you bit know, about him be, before you know, we get him on. That's why I took we, him we around. Gonna, we gonna he, get him he, on. He's 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 got next up. I mean, yeah. you know, he's he's um he's obviously two and zero. He's He's been part of the Mayweather family ever since he was a little youngster. Yeah. You know, and we, and you, all you guys have seen him kind of grow up. Yeah. You know, and now he's on now he's a professional. Yeah. And he's ready to do his thing. He's yeah. like I say he's 2 and 0 and we purposely put him in situations now where again like this Saturday night he's going to be the walkout bout after the main event because I don't want him in the arena at three o'clock in the afternoon, fighting in front of forty people. Yeah. That, I, as he a promoter, as a promoter, I'm not doing him any justice yeah. by by doing that. So yeah. you got to figure out a way to 
And, and because again, what's the rush? Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's, the, what's the rush? Is that I want him to get comfortable with fighting in front of big crowds and all kind of things going on. Because this is part of, of just learning to be a professional, mm -hmm. to learn how to deal with the media. That's why I've been taking them to the, all the press rooms and Floyd introduced them into, you know, at the Canelo fight. Yeah. We, like those kind of experiences as a young fighter, people don't get a chance to experience because one, the only one who can go in and disrupt a, a major press conference is somebody like a Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. again, he's had an early introduction of what being on this big stage is like. So it's just preparing him. All he has to do is continue to stay focused and do the things that he needs to do. And then we're going to do our part and we're going to line these guys up and he's just going to knock them down yes, one sir. by one, yes, sir. one by one. How many times do you think we see him this year? So where are we at in March? March. Maybe four or five? Yeah. Maybe four or five? Real quick, before we get you on, Big Dog, talk to us. I always have this, um, or I've had this um, ideology. If you're a young fighter and your first round ends, no, 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 leave it on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, leave it on. And your first round ends in the first round knockout, you should be in the ring next month. Yeah. yeah. Is it, so even with it being four to five times this year, there's still the possibility that he might be doing some back-to-back -back types. Oh, of it's, no, it's no doubt. It's, I just want to make no, sure that, yeah. It's, it's no doubt. For an example, he fought in, De was it December? Or uh, November? Well, no, in November. I was supposed to fight December. Yeah, but, yeah. right. And we was, I was going to bring him right back in December, but he had some dental work to do, you know, da da da, da and couldn't, it was already scheduled. So that's why he didn't go then, you know, that kind of thing. So again, it's, it's like, we're just going to line these guys up. And, and he's learning the right way already. Um, what he's, he's active in the community already. Mm -hmm. You know, like for this fight uh, Saturday night, he's sponsoring 50 kids from Child Haven. You all, we all know what Child Haven is. There you go. You, you know, so they've already come to the gym and got a chance to meet him. You know, this was about two months ago. Yeah, yeah two, about two months ago. And shake his hand and watch him work a little bit. And, you know, these kids, because I, I, I know the person who runs the program down there, they got, they took pictures with him up and they got it all in the in their uh, youth sports room. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's like, and they, they are attached to him. Absolutely. And this is how, what it starts, being involved with the, these kids in the yeah. community. And they already look up to him. And they That's excited to come to the fight on, yeah. you, you know, and these are the kind of things with working with the experienced promoter that you know what it takes to, kind of build your base and and with him being a uh from here from las vegas living here in las vegas and that's what it's going to be we're going to build him a big following here right here at home and we're going to move from there, there you and go. every 10 to 20 years uh leonard elby touch strikes gold <laughs> <laughs> hey, i got a i got a son i need you to bless uh, without He's a two doubt. years old yeah, so yeah. yeah he'd be at the back baptism. without without a doubt i did it did it with floyd did yeah, it with tank yeah, and, yeah and see? here we go let's get him yeah. on let's that's get him it. on yeah Appreciate Great introduction. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's a mixtape intro yeah. right there. Appreciate you, Leonard. Appreciate you, Leonard. Carmel Moulton. You got, you got a ring name? Yeah, big deal. Big deal. Oh. Okay. How you doing, ma'am? Is it, is it nice Carmel Big Deal Moulton or is it Big Deal Carmel Moulton? Yeah, it's Carmel Big Deal Moulton. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Who gave you that? My dad. Okay. Uh, hey, yeah. That used to be your dad's street name. <laughs> <laughs> How are we feeling so far, big man? Uh, I feel great, you know. Uh, transitioning from the amateurs to the pros has been great. Uh, I felt comfortable with it, and uh, I actually like the pros a lot better, like way better than the amateurs. Uh, it's a it's lot only more been two fights, bro. I know, What's but talking about <laughs> it's different. You know, I'm just saying the whole atmosphere. Uh, it's just way more fun, and just even being in the ring is is just way better than the yeah. amateurs. Yeah, I have a I have a video on my phone from when you fought in Cleveland a couple like just a, like two years ago. You at the Nationals in Cleveland, and we bumped into, into each other. I didn't even know I had my phone up. I don't remember doing that. But I was searching through something in my phone, and I seen the video. You almost like, people don't know, like, he's been getting down like this for a long time. What are you ex what are you excited to show people that they don't know about you? Uh, Just my boxing ability. I feel like a lot of people, they think I'm, like, a pressure fighter and just come in there and just try to, like, force a knockout and stuff like I read comments and stuff people think that but uh really I, I like to uh be a, a better counter puncher I feel like I'm a better counter puncher than pressure fighter uh, I feel like 
I feel like uh, I have great boxing ability, and uh, I feel like later on in my career, I'll get to show that. What way do you campaign in that right now? Uh, this fight's at 130. I've been uh, bouncing from 126 and 130. Okay, okay. Where do you want to be a champion at, 126 and then 130 or just 130? Uh, whichever one I get to first, yeah. you know, but uh, whatever opportunity I get first, that's yeah. where. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You got some? Uh, you ready for the pressure? Most yeah. definitely. You know everybody's looking at you. Once Floyd put their arm around you, Leonard Ellaby put their arm around you, a lot comes with that, I feel like. But I know your dad got you right and you're ready for that moment. Yeah. You, you ready to go? Most definitely. Okay. I always say, uh, well, no, I don't always say, but this is a, a, an expression that just came to me, and I like to give it to a lot of people. It's not how long you've been alive, 17 years old. It's not how long you've been alive. It's how long you've been paying attention. Mm. So anyone out here in Vegas, we know you've been on the scene since you was about seven years old. We, we met when you were like seven, I think. I don't yeah. even think you were eight yet when we met. Yeah, I don't even I don't think I had my first fight yet. Didn't have your yeah. first fight when we met. Mm. But – but you've been so you've been on the scene for a long time. Who have you been paying attention to, and what have you been learning? Uh, all the uh, pros, you know, that I've been around, especially being in Vegas, I get a lot of uh, professional experience. To all the guys in the gyms, uh, I definitely pay attention to my dad. You know, even you yeah. when I was in your camps back yeah. then. Yeah. Of course, I, I'm always watching, uh, yeah. soaking everything up like a sponge. Definitely Floyd. You know, everything he has to tell me, I always pay attention to it. And so, you know, just all the great champions that I've, uh, even the ones I've sparred, Tank, learned from him, Shakur, uh, Robisi Ramirez, uh, Kenneth Sims, Africa the other day. So, you know, even to this day, I'm, I'm still learning every, every single day. And w what motivates you? Uh, I just want to be the best. Uh, I just, I want to be the greatest in the sport, you know. It's definitely one of the greatest for sure. And, uh, I just feel like a lot of people overlook me, and they feel like maybe I just I just got a lot of hype around me, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm where I'm at. But I feel like I got the skills, and uh, I'm gonna mm -hmm. show it, and I just want to prove people wrong. And, and uh, I heard you say one of the greatest. Always tell kids and everybody, dream big. You want to be the greatest. Don't you want to dream? Don't don't ever limit your dreams, young man. Yes, dream big as hell. Yes, sir. Don't call him young man. You'll know him. <laughs> He's young. He is young. Uh, Kamel, um, good luck on Saturday night. I already know you're going to do your thug thizzle. Um, I'm going to be telling people to sit down, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> sit down, sit down. It's one more. It's one more. But um, look forward to seeing you get back in the ring yes, and do sir. your thing. And appreciate you for, for joining the podcast. We'll have you back soon. Well, definitely. I appreciate you. Always, man. Sure. Always. Nice to meet you, man. Always. Yeah. Blessings. Go be great, man. Yes, sir. Listen, it's 3 o'clock. Right, well, we got to get up out of here. Always. Yep. We got to get up out of here. Um, I'm headed to the boxing gym. Oh, man. And uh, we're going to do a boxing workout. We're going to stream the boxing workout who, live. Who's going to be up there? Um, I got a kid by the name of Sammy Goodman okay. coming into the gym. Australia's finest. He is uh, he's the, the number one contender at one. I want to get this wrong. 118, I believe. He's the okay. number one contender at You getting in there with him? I'm not getting in there with him. Okay. However, I may be catching some miss with them or something like that but okay. just want you guys to check out everything else the Portaway podcast got going on we got some exciting stuff coming up and i'm looking forward to all of it man we got some good week some good weeks in boxing coming up go ahead what <laughs> i you know some bullshit coming i ain't know some hey uh you, you know you've been training for the last couple of months been been switching over you nice on the miss like coach coach uh coach, I hate coach roger i hate the miss you, okay oh no no no, no, no. He, he'll go like me. this <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that greatest is, moment. Is, no, you see that? You see him? You see that? Yeah, hell yeah. You never <laughs> see him with Floyd? They both wasn't looking. Oh, they, no, no. You and your dad never did that? No, absolutely. No, not. you did. Your dad well, would, covered your the, eyes. The, the, yeah, yeah, so that was my dad. Your, your dad closed his eyes too? No. <laughs> no. That's hilarious. But no, we got some good stuff coming up uh, tomorrow. We'll be right back here for the weigh in. After the weigh in tomorrow, we'll be live doing our barbershop episode, 4 o'clock. Pacific time tomorrow. Yes. Um, and you can catch us in just about an hour. We'll be live at the boxing gym. So we'll see you in a minute. Man, I wish we could have got Gabrielle on. And, yeah, uh, I did too. Yeah, yeah I, I seen her walk her. by. Yeah. yeah. I really wanted to get her on too. So yeah. she'll be around tomorrow. Yeah, Hopefully we'll, we can we'll grab her, her tomorrow. Yep. We're going to start a little earlier tomorrow just so to so put this on record right now. Okay, we're going to start, uh, start about 1230 tomorrow. Perfect because my day's light tomorrow. All right, bet. We're going to start you. We're gonna start time tomorrow, 1230. I'll be and then, here. And then at, after the the weigh-in. We'll see what's going on, and we'll probably commence a little after the weigh-in. Um, Perfect. This is the Port of Way. See yep. you in a minute. Stay blessed.
Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles, brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions.